Like sands through the hourglass, so are the adventures of Norman and Crystal. Don't forget the accent on the A. Welcome back. We are getting ready to play the next scenario of Gloomhaven. Um, just wanted to do a quick recap, but also fix two things uh, really quickly that I had kind of messed up on before that has been pointed out to me. Um, so in the last scenario, if you watched it uh, two videos ago, Norman opened up a treasure chest and found a bunch of gold. And I converted that money into gold, even though it was already technically gold. So uh, I had ended my time in Gloomhaven in the last video with 24 coins, uh, but technically he would have had 10 less than all of that that I was tracking. So he really has 14 coins. So I've gone ahead and made uh, that adjustment on Norman's thing. Oh, and by the way, hey everybody, Tom here, and we are Gloomhavening. And then one more other thing that was also wisely pointed out to me is that um, Crystal's um, big mission is that she needs to complete four scenarios in Gloomhaven. And I had marked down that we had completed a scenario, but it was not a Gloomhaven scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that. She has currently not completed anything in um, Gloomhaven. So I've gone ahead and made those adjustments. And then uh, we can go and look a little bit closer to the board before we set up. So just as another part of our quick recap, uh, just remember that our very first scenario, we went into um, the Black Barrow. And from there, we were successful and, and ventured down into the Barrow Lair, where a severe miscalculation on my part had Norman do an awesome and Crystal had a rough go. Kind of the opposite of what happened here. And so they ran away, barely escaping a bunch of zombies, and they came back into Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven in Gloomhaven, Norman bought a new helmet. You're going to see that soon. He's very excited to show it off. Um, and while they were hanging out around the town, a woman approached them and said that somebody had taken her daughter. She said, they've taken my daughter, and all she had was a letter with a black raven on it, and we are going to kind of follow up on that lead. Uh, Crystal was more interested than Norman was, mostly because Crystal. Uh, again, had that best friend from her childhood disappear. I think she's kind of interested in people being taken. There's something obviously going on with that. And so Norman is uh, kind of following along. And so we have uncovered this scenario here, which is called um, Shadows Within. And so that's where we're heading. We're going to go into here and see what's happening in this uh, neck of the woods, I guess you could call it. Um, and so to actually see what's happening here, let's take a look at the app. Okay, so I have the app pulled up with Scenario 83, The Shadows Within. Um, you're going to notice that I didn't do a road event um, leading up to this scenario. That's because you don't do road events for scenarios that are linked to Gloomhaven. We were just in town, nothing uh, too exciting happened. So you're going to see that um, because the scenario is linked to Gloomhaven, we didn't do a road uh, uh, event. And the requirements for us to get to this scenario are that um, we need to have the party needs to have the achievement, bad business, which we do have. That came from our decision uh, with the card. And then uh, our goal here is to kill all of the enemies. So let's go ahead and read um, the introduction. It is almost midnight when you arrive at the silent bridge. Looking around, you find a dead raven hanging over the side. Farther down, you see a small opening at the base of a column illuminated by a dim light. You climb down a rope, and between all the dirt and trash you find a wooden door marked with the same raven symbol. This night has changed, and not for the better. You burst through the door and hear an eerie crying at the far end of a stone hallway. Around you are robed men and their guard dogs. Something sinister is brewing. So you can see from this that it looks like there's going to be a long corridor or something that we're going to be venturing down into. Um, let's go ahead and turn this upside down, and that will better represent how um, I'm going to go ahead and set this up. So we're going to be entering at the bottom. We're going to have two hounds, it looks like, in the corner of that entryway. And then it looks like we've got two cultists, one elite and one regular, ready to keep us from going through that door. So you can see I've got that set up right here. I have chosen to put Norman on this part of the entrance and um, Crystal right here. Uh, we're ready to kind of go after the wolves. We've got our two cultists here. I have their information set up and this one is our elite cultist and I have gone ahead and just placed one of my own yellow cubes just to help me track that um, a little more easily. And you may have noticed that I have some random white cubes here um, on the hounds and might be wondering why. Um, I just put those there because these hounds have retaliate. 
uh, which means that if we attack, attack, if we attack them adjacently, uh, they're going to attack back. So we probably want to keep our distance from them and take care of them with any range that we can uh, as quickly as possible. Okay, so as we dive into the round, let's just do a quick um, overview of what we've got going on here. Uh, so we have Norman's normal stuff and the cubes I've provided to help me track my decisions and stuff like that. He's starting at a health of 10, experience of 0 because we're still at level 1. He's got his normal boots, his minor healing, and then his brand new helmet. Um, you can't see it in this picture. Uh, he took this picture before he modified it, but uh, it turns out that these are not feathers, but these are horns. <laughs> and so he had to modify his helmet slightly. You know, it's not the best job ever, but it's something. So at least he can put the helmet on. And so just a quick um, view of this is the reason why I got the helmet is when Norman's attacked, uh, we're going to consider any times two from the um, attacker to be a uh, plus zero instead. So I know that won't come up terribly often, but it will probably come up for me in the absolute worst of times. So of Norman's 13 cards, I get to keep 10 of them. I've already gone through and made the decision of what I'm keeping based off of what I've seen. And I'm going to get rid of the Wall of Doom, the uh, Provoking Roar, and the Shield Bash. So these are the three that I'm taking out of his hand. Oh my heck, that was awesome. You know, I, I would redo that, but I just want you guys to see how special I can be. All right, so there's our cards. Here's our hand of 10. We've got to decide uh, what we're going to be doing with all of these cards available to us. Uh, let's go look at the map. So I'm thinking that we're going to want Norman... Because these guys have Retaliate, we probably want to hit them with ranged, I'm guessing. I'm planning on sending Norman up here quickly and hoping that Crystal could take care of these hounds is kind of my plan. I'm, have, I'm thinking that he can just bust up here, take out these cultists, and then we can probably let Crystal handle the, nor the, the hounds and or Norman can come back the other way and help her from the other side. So just taking a quick look, we want to be able to move him. One, two, three, four, oh, five. I don't know if we're going to be able to run that quickly. So, um, hmm, yeah. I'm just looking at these move actions. Can I go very far? One, two, three. Probably can't get there, I'm going to guess, um, this time around. Move four. What did I say I needed? One, two, three, four, five. Oy, that's close. Okay. Mm so, yeah, we have our move six, but then, then we're going to discard. It's a little too early, I think, to be discarding. All right, so not a big deal. Do we have our range? I feel like when I was going through, I kept one of our ranged attacks. Um, yeah, we've got this attack. Attack at a range of three, which is good, because I can stay close to help out Crystal. Um, so why don't we plan on using this attack at a range of three? That's good. Uh, so I can get, maybe I'm just going to come right up here. So I'm going to hold on to that attack of three and range of three. Let's put it at the top and then move three. We don't, we're not really pushing anybody and we're not jumping, but maybe we want to use this one to activate the wind. Maybe Crystal could use that wind for whatever reason. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay. So for Norman, he, where did it go? There it is. Okay, we're going to be playing uh, these top two cards. So let's get this one down here. I know these are not active right now. It's just the best placement for them <laughs> that I know of. Okay, there's our hand. And we probably want to do this uh, more quickly than slowly. So my plan right now is to move three. We have jump if by chance we need it for whatever reason. Maybe the hounds will get in our way. I don't know. And then uh, we're going to have the option to attack, and that's going to gain us an experience point. Nothing really is new with Crystal. She doesn't know where Norman got all of his money. It happened that he picked that money up from the treasure chest when she was knocked out. Um, she's just assuming he has had it all along, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. And uh, she's starting off with six health, obviously zero experience. She still has her uh, regular items here. And um, out of her uh, 11 cards, the three that I'm taking out, are uh, Crackling Air, Hardened Spikes, and Freezing Nova. So these are the ones that I'm not going to be using. I've added one of the X cards, uh, hoping to use that. I think it might be the same as... That sounds... I think this is the same uh, stack of cards we had last time. All right, so um, Crystal's thinking 
um, in her communication with Norman, he, she knows that he's put out some wind. So uh, if she if she can use the wind, that would be great. Okay. Um, uh, why am I looking at this? Let's go to the board. Okay, so just kind of looking at these cards, I think we want to kill the hounds as quickly as possible, especially because they have retaliate, so we don't want them to get too close to us uh, if we can avoid it. So uh, this one's the closer one. I'd like to take that one out. I think what I want to do is use um, this one here, uh, especially because Norman is going to be activating the wind element, and so we're going to be able to add to our attack. That would be helpful, so I'm going to plan on playing that card. And then I had this card last time but didn't end up doing it. I think it would be helpful to have an ally out. And even though we're going to lose this card, um, and so therefore we can't use our heal later on, uh, it's going to be lost and we're able to pick up our lost cards once per, um, once per scenario. So yeah, let's hold on to that one and this one, and we're going to see how um, summoning uh, a helper ally is going to be. So let's go ahead and put those up there, and we'll talk about summoning when it gets to her turn. Now, how quickly we want to do that, Norman's initiative is 27. I don't see any reason to try to go slower than that. So yeah, let's go for seven. Hopefully we can get the hound before he gets us. And we're planning on attacking and summoning. I don't think we're going to be healing and healing anytime soon. Okay, so the hounds are... Getting an initiative of 19, all right, so they're going after Crystal, um, but before Norman, what are they going to do? They're going to move and attack, and then add plus two attack if the target is adjacent to any of the Hound's allies. Ooh, okay, interesting. And then uh, the Cultists, 27, wow, they're tied with Norman, so I think Norman goes first in that situation. All right. <clears throat> There's that. It looks like Crystal is going first. Oh, dang it. I'm so stupid. The whole point of Crystal using this attack was to use the wind, so I really should have put that over there. I just got distracted by the dog and stupid. <laughs> so even though I have an advantage because I can see other people's cards, apparently I'm not going to use that advantage anytime soon. <laughs> so whatever. All right, Crystal is going to go. Let's have her... Um, Let's do the normal attack first, and then I'm going to explain the summon ability. So this attack card is just going to be discarded. We're going to pick somebody uh, at a range 3 away. We're going to attack them with 2. So I'm going to be attacking that hound right there. That's hound number 3. And modified. Come on, let's get a times 2. Uh, the hound, by the way, has a health of 4. All right, plus 1. So that's not too bad at all. Okay, so we've got a plus 1 on that attack. The hound's going to take 3 damage. And so Hound 3 is going to take 3 damage, puts it down at 1, and even though he has Retaliate, I'm remembering from that cube, uh, if I'm understanding Retaliate correctly, that only happens when if, if the Hound was adjacent to us, which is why I was trying to attack from range. At least he's kind of close to dying. And now that's going to bring us to Crystal's second action, or Crystal, sorry, Crystal, uh, which is to summon a Mystic Ally. And so the way that these summoning things work, you can see this kind of symbol right here, is that in the box, this is the first time we've seen this in my playthrough videos, uh, there are these tokens. There's a big one and a small one. There are lots of different colors, uh, kind of the different colors for the different players, I think. And uh, they also have numbers, so you can track things if there are multiple of them. So the way that this works is that we're going to put this little one, and we've got the matching one here. We put the one on top of that just to remember who is who. And then we're going to go ahead and summon this uh, mystic ally. This ghost is going to come help us out. And we're going to summon her right next to Crystal. And now we need to go ahead and place the summon character next to Crystal. Now, uh, I'm realizing that maybe this was a dumb plan. Why? Oh, the reason why I think that is, I was planning on putting the summon character right here in order to protect them from the hounds, because obviously I want the summon character to have <laughs> a chance before um, losing it. So um, I was thinking about putting it here, but that's still going to be equidistant from these hounds. These hounds are going to, like this hound is going to come after Crystal um, or the summon character, and it will focus on, it's going to go after who has the lowest initiative. And I think the way that the, the book words it is that... Um, this character always goes before the character who summoned it. And so it's kind of like it has an earlier initiative, like Crystal's initiative was seven, and so this one kind of has an initiative of six right now. 
which means that this hound is going to come straight after the um, mystical ally or the mystic ally before it gets a chance to go. We, but I'm not quite sure if there's anything I can really do to prevent that at this point. So I can kind of choose to put him down here and the hound will go after that instead of after Crystal. I guess that could be a good thing. And then Crystal's still at a distance. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to summon that there. Oh, this will be short-lived and that will make me sad. So strategically, kind of dumb, but we're all learning, right? This is the first time I've ever used the Mystic Ally, so we're going to find out uh, how well this goes. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put this here, because this is going to stay around until it's killed. Um, and I also need to gain two experience, and I'm going to go ahead and put this die here just to track their health, even though <laughs> it's about to die. And then we're going to go ahead and gain two experience points for having done that. I think I gain these experience now, um, and not when this dies, but yeah, we'll call it now. So these hounds went a lot more quickly than I was, you know, obviously planning on uh, with an initiative of 19. So my plan to get Norman up there is also not going to work. Um, but we're going to go ahead and move the hounds. They get a movement of four. And so this hound here, oh, let's go in order. So this hound uh, is either going to come here or here. We get to choose. Let's just put it down here. Why not? And then going towards Norman. Uh, this is going to go one, two, and attack Norman. So they're just getting flanked. Um, we could just easily put them up here, but yeah, whatever. So the, I like this idea that they're symmetrically kind of going in whoosh, like that. All right. So one at a time, though. All right. So hound number three moves and then attacks. Their attack is two, and then it needs to get modified. And I guess it would probably be a good idea to have the modified cards ready. Sorry about that. So... I'm going to give it a shuffle. I'm pretty sure I shuffled when we cleaned up, but, you know, you can never be too sh shuffled. All right, so let's put these right here. Okay, so the Hound is attacking with two against our Mystic. I really hope for a miss or a minus one, otherwise the, the ally is going to be gone. Or a plus one works too. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks for coming and being my shield, ally. An attack of three <laughs> just knocks that out. So that was really a good use and really good strategy, Tom. Great job. Uh, so that card is lost. And now Hound 5 is going to move. One, two, and attack. An attack of two modified. Oh, jeez. With a plus two. All right. Norman's taking four damage. And rather than stopping that four damage, even though four damage is terrible, I think we're just going to take it. Uh, I don't want to lose cards so quickly. All right, so we're going with that. And sorry, I totally forgot to take our ally off the board. So there we go. And that is going to bring us to Norman's turn. And my thought is let's change our plans up a little bit. Uh, not the best, most effective use of this attack, but why not? I want to kill that hound. And especially with retaliate, if I don't kill this hound in this go, it's just going to strike back at Norman for one. But if I can kill it all the way, then I can't retaliate. So I'm going to go ahead and swap that out, and we're going to start off with an attack of two, just an adjacent one. Uh, well, let's start off with this attack here, because I could move afterwards towards the cultists if needed. So I'm going to start off with this attack of three, and I can hit um, two adjacent allies. So there's just the one hand right now, and we're going to gain an experience. Let me do that before I forget. I'd like to gain 26 experience. Okay, so gain one experience, and we're going to go attack for three. Clearly, we're going after this guy here. And that three modified. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Rage! So, hound number five is just taking a whopping one damage. Not, not Norman, what am I doing? <laughs> not Norman's strongest uh, start, for sure. But I guess that just leaves us with this um, attack of two. Modified is going to be two. Still didn't kill that stupid hound. Oh, and because I attacked that first time, he retaliated. I just needed to take another damage. Sorry, forgot about that. And I'm going to be attacking and not killing him again. So I'm going to take another damage. <laughs> He's down to four. Wow, really strong start. Good job, Tom. And we'll go ahead and discard that. So this hound is down to one. Both hounds are down to one, but they're retaliating. And that's going to bring us to the cultist's turn. And so the cultists are moving plus zero. They have a movement of two. And so we always start with the elite. So he's going to go one, two, and then this guy will go one, two. They're just creepily 
coming forward. They're attacking, but they don't have range, so they're just cloaked and creepy. But with that, that's bringing us to the end of the round. And so uh, this is the only card that needs to be shuffled back in because of that, you know, circle-y thing. And so we're just going to go ahead and shuffle. Something like that. And, oh, I haven't really set up the elements board. We should probably do that. So let me go ahead and bring up these elements. We'll put it here because I poorly planned last time. And let me grab the round tracker that doesn't mean anything in this scenario. And we are on round two. So for round two, let's start off our planning with Crystal. I'm hoping to find um, some ranged multiple attacks. So, yeah, let's go look. So I've been thinking about doing one of my big major attacks, like I was thinking about attacking at a range of three and targeting three people and losing the card, but I just am I'm having traumatic experience memories from last time. So my, my thought was maybe move here and then shoot at each dog and also this cultist, which would be a really cool move, um, but it's just putting me super close to that cultist where I don't think I need to be. So why don't I just plan on two minor attacks? Let's just take out these hounds. So... I've got this attack too down here, which is awesome. And then I could just plan on a simple ranged attack. Uh, maybe that one. An attack of two with a range of three or... Oh, wait, where's my... Oh, yeah, I already used the other one. Okay, so... And this is my attack of three to range of two. That would be cool, but I want to use that bottom attack uh, even more. So let's just hope that we can beat the dogs. I know the dogs are really fast. Let's plan on using uh, these two here, and I'm going to pray that, I mean, I don't have hopes, but I'm going to pray that an initiative of 20 is enough. So these two, um, an initiative of 20, and we're going to go like that. And again, Norman is going to try to avoid hitting the dogs because um, their retaliating is hurting him. But instead, um, I want to come up and hit those uh, cultists. So, what if, well, that's a good one, but it loses. Pierce is good if they have shields, but they don't have shields. We could kind of push them away and attack of three and then push for two. That, that's not a bad idea. Um, I wish I could attack them. Where's my other multiple attack? That one. Maybe I want to do that one against um, these guys. So one, two, three. If I could walk up there for three. Um, there's a movement of three, so that's not helpful. It wouldn't hurt to heal right now. Because uh, I've been taking on all that dumb damage. Uh, but then I can't move. All right, all right. Um, no. Mm. Oh, that would be good. We could move three and then push. We wouldn't be able to attack, but we could move three. Um, yeah, okay. And then... I really need a heal. That's so dumb. Why am I so dumb? This would be a good one. We'd lose it, though. Move forward. Yeah, I don't I don't want to use that one now. Um, or that. But then I'm not moving. I gotta move. Alright. Unless I go slowly enough that the cultists make their way up. Gosh, I don't know. Um, give me a second. Okay, sorry. I'm gonna take a second. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, all right, not a great move. There's nothing to loot right this second, so I'm going to just go ahead and move four, and so I'm just going to stride up to them and attack two. I'm setting myself to be attacked by them, and who knows what they're going to do, but their general attack is pretty wussy, um, as several cultists have been known to be. So let's do these. Go like that, and my initiative. Well, we're going to be going slowly. We might not even need to move so far. Oh, this is kind of dumb. I wonder if the cultists are going to make their way to us. In which case, maybe I should be healing myself instead of moving. Um, maybe that is... I, yeah, do you know what? I'm going to change. Because <laughs> I'm worried. I'm worried. Alright, I'm going to make my initiative this. Hoping to heal myself. Uh, this is kind of my plan. Healing, yeah, in case things get close. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Decisions. Okay, so Norman's going at an initiative of 18, Crystal at 20. 
Um, I don't know what's happening. 72, wow, really slow. And attack minus one, but they're going to pierce through shields, and then they're going to move, and then they're going to attack again. Vomit. Okay, well, at least it's a slow, so Crystal has got to kill those things first. And then the cultists. Wow, an initiative of 10. Okay, um, but they're only going to move up one. Wow. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, while we're here, the cultists are doing their thing. Um, but they are going to uh, move minus one, so they're just going to move one space. So we'll bring this guy here and this guy here. No, cultists always move symmetrically, right? Like, kind of in this creepy pattern. They're just like, sure, why not? Okay. Um, there you go there. And then they're not attacking, and if we kill them, it looks like they explode. Um, but I don't see a chance of killing them this turn. All right, so kind of a dumb waste, probably. I don't know. Uh, Norman, let's have him heal himself, because he's already at four. That was dumb. All right, so he's going to heal himself up to six. And then um, let's just do an attack. We're just attacking the dog. This is kind of a waste of this. Uh, yeah, it's a waste of this, but we do not want the dogs to get a turn. Uh, so let's go ahead and we've just discarded both of those, but I'll discard this on top because that's what I'm doing. Okay, so just for the hound that's right next to him, an attack of two plus zero is enough to take the dog out. And so hound number five is gone. We need to, oh yeah, I like this idea. Uh, a user suggested putting coins, I can't remember, sorry, uh, here, just to remember that when they die, that you need to populate the board with that. And so we just killed off hound number five, and so these are gone, and this comes in its place um, right there. And so I don't have to worry about that hound anymore. And we've healed ourselves up a little bit. So I'm going to pretend like that was a good round so far. And what I'm thinking for... Oh, do you know what I forgot? I forgot that there was a leaf. Norman's uh, heal um, engaged the uh, leaf element. So we do want to move that up because I think that's going to come in use now. So what kind of a nerd would I be without making a leaf reference about I'm a leaf on the wind, watch how I soar, you know, you know what I mean. Okay, so for Crystal's turn, uh, let's have her go ahead and start with her um, attack of two at a range of two to get the hound. So the one hound, attack of two modified as a plus zero is enough to take it out. So this hound is gone, we lose that, put that there, see ya. And now we can go ahead and do uh, this attack, which we'll bring a little bit closer, it is going to be an attack of two at a range of three, and we do have the leaf element that we can uh, pull down to add one to the attack. So the question is, which of the cultists are we going to go after? Well, let's just discard both of these while we're at it. Um, I'm going to give myself an experience because we're going to use uh, the leaf element. And who do we want to attack? Um... I mean, it's always nice to just kill somebody if we can. We're going to be attacking three and modified. So one, two, three. I could maybe take him out, but this guy has a health of nine. It would probably be good to start wearing him down if I can. So yeah, and he has a stronger attack. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go after the elite guy, see if I can uh, start wearing him out. So he's a, he is at a range of three, and so we're attacking with three modified. Holy two. So not, not awesome, but you know, every little bit helps, I'm sure. And then the hounds don't take their turn. Now, I think in the last, was it the last video? Um, I, I might move this stuff off the board just to make it a little bit less busy. Um, in fact, let's do that, but I'm not shuffling the deck uh, in case there are more hounds. I think that was a mistake I had made uh, previously. So I'm going to put that up there and then we can just make this look really nice if I put these right here. Oh, behind the scenes. Nobody's shuffling their decks, so we just need to pull that leaf down, and we are on round three. I don't see too much specific stuff that I want Crystal to do, so let me uh, show you kind of what I'm planning. So my thought is... Um, to use either one of these attacks. It doesn't matter which one, I don't think, necessarily. I'm sorry, I'm hitting the camera. Um, but I'm going to use those attacks, one of those attacks, and then I'm just going to use a, a regular movement. Nothing 
too exciting and I'm kind of planning on going slowly. So my thought was to use this attack and hope that these guys just come a little bit closer so I could hit them, hit them all again in experience and we would lose the card but again I can pick up some lost cards uh, in a little bit. So uh, I'm going to use these two here, this top action and that bottom action. So put that like that and we're going to have one more turn before we need to rest. Um, oh my gosh, I totally, totally spaced it. Don't yell at me. I just got so excited to play, you guys. It's been so long. Um, again, I'm going to go slowly. My plan is this. I didn't do, um, I didn't do the battle goals. Okay, we've got to do that really fast. Sorry. Okay, so I've gone ahead and just drawn two. Let's take a quick look. Uh, be the first to kill a monster. <sighs> That would have been awesome, um, but I don't think it's fair for me to use that. So I'm just going to stick with whatever this is and apologize again. Uh, kill three or fewer monsters during the scenario. Wow. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of rooms. I've killed one so far. So I'm probably going to... I've got to keep this one because it wouldn't be right for me to hold on to that one, uh, considering my mistake, and I don't want to re-record everything. <laughs> that would be a lot of work. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do this, and I think what I'll do is to go ahead and add three cubes onto here, and then I have killed one hound. So I'm going to go ahead and just take off cubes each time I kill somebody and hope that I have cubes um, at the end of the uh, scenario. Okay, so for Norman, and again, I really apologize. Okay, I'm done apologizing. Uh, the Zealots have three or fewer total cards in your hand, and... Wait, what is this? Okay, have three or fewer total cards in your hand and discard at the end of the scenario. Well, that's perfect, probably, because he is a Zealot, so he's going to try to get himself exhausted anyway. How about this? Uh, never allow your current hit point value... Uh, to drop below half of your maximum hit points. Whoa, I'm not doing that one ever, because I am always um, getting hit. <laughs> yeah. All right, but Zella just sounds perfect for Norman. So, uh, yeah, let's hold on to that one, and I don't think we even need cubes to track that, because we'll just check at the end of the scenario, and he's going to definitely try to exhaust himself out. So for Norman's turn, let's go take a quick uh, peek at the board. For Norman, what I'm kind of thinking is using this movement of four and prancing up to here. And then I could use this card that's going to let me attack where the attack is the number of movement that I made. Um, I could just easily move six, but I don't, I'm not ready to lose, I'm not ready to lose a card here in the first room. So that's kind of my plan right now. Uh, probably should be looting. We've got to pick some stuff up at some point, but I want to kill these guys too. So, this is kind of the plan. We're kind of doing slow stuff. And heck, that movement of four at such a slow speed. This might not be... This might not be great. Maybe I'm just going to end up looting anyway. We're going to have to see how fast the cultists move. Um, and this could have been a really, really poorly planned thing. Okay, cultists, go slowly. Alright, so the cultists are... 39. All right, so they're going to be going first because we're just so slow. Their movement is minus one, and then they're going to attack minus one and heal. Ugh, I don't like that. All right, so they're going to go first. The elite is just going to move one because his movement is two. So he's coming right here. He's doing an adjacent attack, but there's nobody there. Ugh, but he is healing himself up to eight. Okay, and then this guy is moving one. At least they're coming in close. Can't attack. And he, yep, did take a damage, so he's up to five. Poops. And so for Norman, let's do, 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 huh? What we were planning on doing before. We're going to move four, and then we're going to attack. Um, and let me give myself an experience before I forget. So, yeah, let's, let's trace this out. I want to go one, two, three, four. Oh, but I do have my boots. Maybe this is the time to use my boots. Uh, because remember, I can use the boots once per between rest actions. <laughs> and that's going to allow me to add two movement to a single movement. So I could move six and have an attack of six, which would be even better. One, two, three, four, five, six. I could attack from right here and still go after the elite guy and kind of be protecting Crystal. One, two... 
three, four, five, six. I'm trying to figure out if I can end up right here, and I don't think that I can. One, two, three, four, five, six. No. One, two, three, four, five, six. No. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six. He just what? What's the name of this card? <laughs> Grab and go. Okay, well, I'm not really grabbing anything, but I am going. Uh, and he's just running in a circle, and he's going to run around and do a balanced measure attack. So Crystal's just like, what's he doing? Because he's going to run woo, around and land right here. That was a movement of six, and he's going to be attacking this guy with a strength of six. Now would be a great time oh, for a times two. So let me just go ahead and turn this over, and an attack of six... Uh, plus zero. That's still not terrible. So he is down to two. Not bad. Heck, I wonder if Crystal wants to just take him out. But before she does anything, let's just discard these cards. And I think we are going to do this one. So uh, I don't even need to move for this at this point. We're going to end up just doing a simple movement probably. But all right, so let's go ahead and do our attack of three. With a range of four, and we're going to hit everybody in the path. Um, and so let me trace out that path for you. And I'm just realizing I shouldn't have discarded that card. I need to lose that card, but we'll get there, I promise. Um, well, he only has a strength. Maybe I just do a basic attack? Mm, one, two, three, four. No, this is more fun. All right. Uh, so I'm going to trace the path, though. I don't think, like, I think you could trace over an ally, and it wouldn't hurt them. Uh, but either way, let's go one, two, three, four. And I, I don't think you can double back and hit the same person twice that I can remember. Now, you guys can check me on this. I don't think, like, for example, I don't think I can go one, two, three, four for that attack and hit the same guy twice. I think, I think each person can only be hit once. Yeah, this is my understanding. So, uh, let's start off with weaker guy for our attack. And let me go ahead. I'm going to be at, uh, targeting two people, so I need to give myself two experience points and put this over here. Um, oh, and before I forget, let's move the leaf. That's a popular element today. So, weaker guy is getting attacked by three, modified... To zero, that's fine. A hit of three is good. So he's down to two, like that. And then we're coming after this guy. And I guess secretly I should hope that I don't actually kill him. Uh, he only has two left. Really? Um, I gotta be more careful about this. Okay, but either way, uh, we're attacking with three modified as a miss. <laughs> I'm halfway happy about that, just because I didn't want to kill him, but also it would have been nice to have him dead. So that's going to bring this round... No, oh, no, that does not bring this round to a close. Duh. Um, I need to also move. I can move up to four. Um, why don't I just hop on over here and pick up this, um, this loot? And then the round will end after I shuffle this stuff together. Make sure it's facing the right way. It is. And... Shuffle it a couple of times like this. Uh, and cut it in half for luck. All right. Okay, that was the end of the round. The leaf goes down, this goes up. All right, so Crystal doesn't have too much to choose from, but I did forget to discard this card uh, earlier. So let's go ahead and... Oh, sorry for hitting the camera. And we're just going to play these two out. We don't know exactly what that turn is going to look like. Um, but chances are we're going to just be doing a basic move and a basic attack. Um, and we'll just go as early as possible. So um, there's that. Maybe a fancy move, maybe an attack, maybe basic, maybe not. Maybe we'll be looting a whole bunch of stuff. Who knows? We're about to find out. Norman, on the other hand, does have uh, some choices. So let's go see what he can pull off. I also don't see him doing anything overly exciting this turn, um, but he could put his guard up to help him against what's coming up in the next room, for example, and we could do a basic attack. Um, we're kind of trying to get ready, taking like a deep breath before we uh, do our long rest and get all of our cards back. So uh, let's just attack of three. Let's just do this attack of three and um, plan on this where we might swap these um, depending on 
uh, what the cultists do, and we're going to keep an initiative of 32. So these are going down, um, oh, up here, <laughs> and then, yeah, let's keep our initiative of 32, and our current plan is to probably just put our shield up and then do a single attack, and I'm hoping that we're going to kill off uh, both the cultists this turn, and then we could rest and go through the next room. The cultists are going to... What are they doing? Oh, wow, they're going fast. Oh, crappies. And we're really close to them. Oh, that's not good. Okay. Um, we might need to move back. Yeah, we might need to get away from them. <laughs> okay, so they're going first, and then they're going to attack minus one, uh, which is good because... Um, well, they're not moving. They're going to both be attacking Norman here. Uh, their normal attack, well, the elite one's going to go first. His attack is two. Minus one, so he's just doing a basic attack of one against Norman. And then a times two, but Norman does have his helmet, uh, which protects him. Because, just a quick reminder, because it's new for us, uh, when attacked, consider any times two modifier uh, card the enemy draws to be a zero. Yay, I'm glad that came in handy. That was awesome. And then he's just going to take one damage. Uh, so he's down to five. Oh, not on the boots. Not on the boots! And now this guy's going to do the same thing, attacking Norman. Um, his attack is one, minus one, so he's really at a zero, unless this does something exciting. Minus two, that would have come in handy on a different pick, but oh well, we've got it, okay? So no damage from that wussy. So I'm not exactly sure what is happening when the cultists die, but it is going to affect kind of our decisions right now. Um, but when they die, if by chance I can kill them, because they both are down to two health, um, they're going to hurt everybody around them. So, um, you know, my guess, your guess is as good as mine. I'm not, I don't think this is necessarily like they explode, I haven't seen evidence of bombs or explosions in the Gloomhaven world yet, or that they just go crazy with their cultisty knives and just kind of spin around and attack everybody around them. But it's definitely something that I have to keep in mind as I'm planning out um, what I'm doing. And so, I mean, I, I have two good options. I could just attack, I could move, trample through them, and then attack. Um, but I'm kind of concerned about what's about to happen. So uh, what I think I'm going to do instead is let's go ahead and activate this card here. And uh, I need to grab some tokens or, you know, one token. And we're going to put this right here. And now he has a shield to help him out at least uh, if this goes sour. So we've done that. And then we're going to attack three because this guy could do bad stuff, and we're going to go ahead and just attack the elite um, cultists, and he's there, so let's hope for good things. Holy three minus one. Oh, well, that's two. That's good. I think we just got him. The bad news is that uh, Norman's taking kind of a beating from this, so this guy's dead. Um, we're going to go ahead and remove all of that, and we'll put this down, but as he dies, he is attacking, and my best understanding is that Enemies don't attack other enemies, so it's not like everything around him takes two damage, or or an attack plus two, um, which will be three. It's just that Norman's going to. So right now Norman is getting attacked three plus one. Wow, dang it, four. Ooh, that's okay, this is still pretty okay timing. But I think rather than taking four damage, he's going to lose one of his cards. And then he and Crystal can rest um, leading up to this next turn. Oh, except um, on the next six sources of damage, we're going to do one shield. So we're only going to go for four damage there. Okay, so four damage. No, what am I saying? It was two, four, five. Yeah, five damage that we're avoiding goes down to four. Yeah, okay, sorry. And then we're going to lose one of these. Uh, I, I like these both. I don't want to lose either one of them. Crap. Um, do you know what? We're so close. Uh, I don't want to lose either one of these, but also Norman is about to get hurt again from the same kind of damage uh, from the other cultist going crazy. Um, yeah, well... 
I think the good thing is that it's still Norman's turn, right? I think technically it is Norman's turn. So what I'm going to do, call me crazy because I, I don't want to lose either one of those, is I'm going to go ahead and take the four damage. And then, again, I think technically it still is Norman's turn, so during your turn, uh, you can heal yourself. He's going to hurry and drink some potion and heal himself uh, for three. And so that's going to put him back up to four. And hopefully that will be enough to fight off the next little attack coming from um, Crystal killing the other guy. So I don't think we're going to do anything fancy or crazy. I think we're just going to do a basic move of two and a basic attack of two. And so she's going to come right here. And then we're just going to do a basic attack of two against that guy and hope, please, that that's enough. Um, but also it is Crystal, so we don't necessarily want her to be killing anybody because of uh, this card over here. But either way, um, so let's just say we did a basic move with this one. Um, that would be fine. Um, and then we can just do our basic attack with this one. Just an attack of two, modified. As plus zero is enough to take him out, but he is going to hit both of us on his way down. This guy's crazy. All right, so he's gone. Um, I hope this attack doesn't... We know that it's not the times two because we have the times two still. Um, yeah, so he's gone. And then on death, on death, <laughs> whatever, on death, he's going to do a plus two to both Norman and myself. So let's start with myself. Or myself as Crystal because it's her turn. So for Crystal's turn, she's going to take three damage modified as a plus zero. All right. We'll go ahead and just take that damage. I think she hasn't taken any yet so far. And now for Norman, we're really hoping that this is something that's zero or less. Right now he's got four health, but a damage of three is coming in. Plus zero. Okay. <laughs> it's scary, but he's going to take it. So that's going to put him down to one. Oy vey. Um Oh, well, no, that's a lie. He's going to take two. I forgot. He's going to take two. And then he got hit again, which is going to give him an experience. We're just <laughs> using the shield thing up real nice like I rarely do. Okay. So down to health of two, experience of three, and... That'll be good enough to get him moving for uh, next turn. So here to end that round, a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and move this off screen. It might come back later. Um, I'm not shuffling the cards. I don't know why I'm struggling to pick that up. Okay, so that's coming off screen. And then we did have the times two, so we do need to shuffle this entire uh, deck of cards. So let's do that. Trying to grab some from the top and the bottom. Be a good little shuffler. Sure, something like this. Cut it in half for luck. All right. There's where we are. Nobody else needs any shuffling that I can think of. So that's going to uh, exhaust this leaf. And we are now up to round five. And with Crystal, we're going to keep this pretty simple. She's just going to be doing her um, long rest this turn. But Norman has a little more steam in him. Uh, let's see, what are our cards? Because he may just want to run up and open the door or get close to it. Hmm, not necessarily. Uh, maybe, maybe he just does his rest this turn too. Yeah, might as well. Let's just get these guys both resting, uh, together. Um, this will be very simple because <laughs> there is no... Um, bad guy in the room to go this turn. And so let's just go ahead and resolve Norman's rest right now. All right. Yeah. Okay, so we need to go ahead and lose one of these cards. Um, I keep losing the loot, but I keep not getting enough loot. And I actually think that I want to use this loot next turn. So um, let me see. Sorry. Working around the tripod. Uh, so we're going to keep this. Um, I love balanced measure. That's great. Um, probably we're going to need to heal again. I don't necessarily use this retaliate often, but I do want to use that heal. I like all of these other things. I like having this ranged in the attack on the bottom. Hmm. And I like trample. I think of these cards, the one I'm probably not going to use so much is going to be this one. So we... 
But the reason I would keep this is because it doesn't have any losing abilities. Eh, all right, we're gonna go ahead and lose that card. That's Norman's rest, but he does need to heal too. I always forget to do that. Uh, so heal Norman up too, and also his boots are back up and ready to go. So yeah, there we go. And then for uh, Crystal, this decision is a little less scary because um, we know we're just going to be keeping, uh, or we're going to be getting back lost cards once. So I definitely need to hold on to this so that we can get those cards back. What else do I want to keep? Probably want to hold on to this, both for the loot and the movement. Um, some really basic attacks here. Oh yeah, this really came in handy uh, that one time. I think it was back my very first play. I'd like to be able to heal. And so... Uh, that attack is nice to have down here too, but I really like uh, this one. All right, we're going to lose this one for now. But again, <laughs> assuming I don't mess up like I did in the last gameplay, this will be good. Uh, she'll be able to have that. Oh, yeah. And she did kill a cultist, so she's really got to stop killing things. Um, that's going to just bring us on to round six. Round five was really short. And I'm probably even going to keep this round pretty simple, more or less, in that I just want to pick up the coins and then start moving towards the door. Uh, so yeah, all right, so my thought is I'm going to have Norman looting and then I'm going to have him head towards the door. What's the fastest, freest way I could do that? Um, three, not that one, not that, three, yeah. Okay, so let's just go ahead and use this one and that one. All right, go ahead and put this down. And so my, oh, I forgot to heal Crystal. I forgot to heal Crystal. Don't worry, I'll do it. Uh, all right, that goes there. And then we're basically just planning on looting and moving. Crystal needs to heal herself up from resting last round. Sorry, forgot to do that. And uh, what's she gonna do? She um, is gonna pick up one coin. Hmm, I'm trying to do this in the smartest way. I don't know exactly what the smartest way is. Well, okay, I have some I, I have some thoughts. I think Norman's going to pick up the two coins right in front of him, and then let's have Crystal go and loot um, closer to her, so she's going to need to move four. So yeah, let's plan on doing that. Might kind of be a waste of a turn to pick up this loot, but I really want to keep getting cool stuff, and... I don't know. Is this the right thing to do? Maybe not, but we're doing it anyway. So uh, her initiative, it doesn't matter. We'll do 80. We're going to loot We're gonna, and move. So for Norman's turn, he's going to uh, loot first. Yeah, he's just going to pick up all of the coins in front of him, and then he's going to move three. So let's do that on the board. So he's going to pick up these. I'll grab these in just a second, and he's going to move three. One, two, three. Then he'll be ready to open up the door next turn. Yeah. And Crystal is going to move four and then loot, which means she doesn't actually have to stand on the loot. Uh, she's going to try to keep her line of sight open. Who knows what's on the other side of that door. So she's just going to come over here. Movement of two. <laughs> Didn't need to even be four. Um, but we've looted. And now we can discard these cards here. She's wearing out until we can pick up those lost cards again. Okay, round seven, five and six just went super fast. Okay, so Norman is going to be going and opening the door. He's going to need three movement to do that. And then we need him to be ready for whatever's about to happen. Um, heck, this might be the time to use this retaliate thing that I've never used. Uh, if he goes and opens the door and then somebody's standing right there, maybe that would be helpful. Um, yeah, well, let's try it out. Why not? Um, and then his movement. He needs to move three. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Let's just move three. Open the door. Let's keep an initiative. 
pretty early on. It really won't matter because once we open the door, anything that's in there is going to uh, take a turn. And that's kind of my plan. Ooh, I wish I wish I could heal myself right now, but I'm only at four. Maybe I should be healing myself. No, I got to get into that room. Got to get the door. There's no way to move using the uh, tops of those cards that I can remember. So for Crystal, I want her to be kind of close behind Norman. He's going to open the door, uh, but she needs to be ready for that. So my thought is, let's do these. I really wish I could get Norman healed, but I don't think that I can necessarily heal Norman this turn while he's moving up. Because uh, like, if I were to heal him, I can't move up to actually reach him with that. So I'm just going to plan on moving her and preparing to attack. And I'm going to go later on in the round so that uh, her attack hopefully will happen on the other side of the door. We'll just have to see what's there. So Norman's going to start us off. Uh, he is going to set this over here. Um, yeah, and then he's going to retaliate too on himself and he's going to gain each time uh, that he's hit this round. So hopefully opening this door will be dangerous for him. <laughs> and then we're going to go ahead and move three with a jump that doesn't matter and we'll do the wind thing. So a lot's going to be happening when I open that door. I might as well get the wind right now before I forget. And Norman is going to go ahead. One, two. Open this door for three. He'll be right there. Oi. All right, we're going to the app to see what's in the other room. Okay, let's see. In the other room, it's this one here. Um, we've got, what have we got? Oh, a bunch of loot. We have some living spirits, it looks like. And another cult member and an elite cult member, and then the number one on the opposite door. All right, I can handle that. Okay, so I've gone ahead and set that up, and that is the end of Dorman's turn. Um, I just want to point out that the living spirits have <laughs> two shields, which sucks. Um, thankfully, Norman has piercing, which, if I remember correctly, kind of ignores shields. And then they also have flying and flying basically means kind of what it sounds like, is that they uh, can fly over traps or they can fly over obstacles and all of that good stuff. Now, <clears throat> these are two stone pillars. Um, I, that means that you can jump over them. So my guess is that these are more like decorative. They're not like stone pillars like going from floor to ceiling, I don't think. Um, the way that the picture looks, it would it suggest that. But in the rule book, these are simply obstacles that you could jump over or fly over. Um, and also, these don't impede line of sight. So, uh, guessing these are more monuments than anything else, maybe? And now, before we can actually do Crystal's turn, I forgot we need to go back and look at the initiative of the um, of the other members. So, Crystal has a, an initiative of 69 and I don't know why I said other members. I was looking at the cultists and thinking of members of the cult. So, <laughs> yep, that's it. All right, so the Living Spirits now have an initiative of 33. So they are going to go before Crystal. And the cultists have an initiative of 63. So they're also going to go before Crystal. They're going to go, I'll go right now. Okay, so the, the Living Spirit is going to move plus zero and attack minus one and target all enemies within range. So it looks like they've got a range of two. Man, these guys kind of are terrible. All right, so their movement is two, which is going to put them right here. One, two, one, two on Norman. But we will do this one at a time. All right, so he's going to move forward. This is spirit number two. Uh, and then he's going to attack minus one. So he's just going to do a damage of one. Modified is one. All right, not bad. Norman actually blocks that damage, and we move this token down here. Yay, shields. But also, yay, we get to retaliate two. Um, so we're retaliating two and gain one each time you retaliate this round. So we are going to get an experience. Unfortunately, his retaliative two is blocked by <laughs> the, the two shields here. So <laughs> not helpful. All right, then this guy moves forward two, and their attack is one modified as a minus one, which is zero, which is awesome, uh, but Norman is still going to retaliate with two, be blocked with two, but still gain the experience from that. So that's pretty good. Oh, and also, since he blocked, he gains an experience from that too. All right, pretty good on the experience front here. Now we just have to, you know, win. And, crap, I didn't even, I didn't even notice this. Uh, the cultists are summoning normal living bones. 
and then they're going to suffer two damage. <laughs> Crap. There's going to be a lot of bad guys out. Okay, so we need to suffer, uh, suffer, <laughs> summon some living bones. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set that up, and I'll be right back. All right, so we're back, and I've got my living bones <laughs> stuff set up down here. Move the cultist stuff a little bit, and I've added these. Now, um, I forgot to mention before, I'm using these shields. These shields come from the game Galaxy Defender, just to remind myself. For whatever reason, I always forget to look up here, so that just is a helpful reminder for me. And then you might be wondering, why do I have red cubes up here? Well, red cubes up here are going to try to remind me to target two. Um, I think last gameplay, or I feel like at some point I was putting cubes down here to remind me to target two and I wasn't doing it, so <laughs> I'm going to put them up here in hopes that that helps me do a, a slightly better job. So there we go, we're all set up. Now that was the end of Norman's turn, and when bad guys are summoned, they don't actually act on the round. So I'm not flipping over one of their cards to have them move. Coming to the board was their turn uh, for this round. And now we've got to have Crystal doing some work. Um, yeah, sorry. I just am slowing down because I remembered I forgot to have my cultists suffer some damage. So we'll do that when we go back to the board. But um, I, it would be awesome if I could use this, but she's too far away. So uh, we're going to just go ahead and stick with our plan. So Crystal is going to go ahead and move three, and then she's going to pick somebody up to three spaces away and attack. And we do have the wind, so we're going to be able to add one to that attack and gain an experience. I'll do that before I forget. And so, yeah, let's have her um, go ahead and attack at a range of three. I think we can reach that. Ooh, maybe we can't, actually. Oh, man. Hold on. I might need to take this back. Okay, let's go look at the map and <laughs> talk this through. So, first things first, we've got to go ahead and take these guys down to uh, one, two. All right, that was pretty tiring for them to summon those living bones. And then for Crystal, she can move one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, but then her attack, one, two, three, four, yeah, she'd have to have a range four attack, which she just, hmm, dang it, she's not there. Sue, so she's just moving up three. She just had to have that coin. So that's going to uh, bring us to the end of the round. So the living spirits are going to need to get this shuffled in. So we'll put it... That's not even in the middle, but <laughs> there we go. Shuffle. Apparently that one jumped out. It's like a ghost was there. Okay. Shuffle. This is the first time we've seen living spirits, I think, that I can remember. And then over here, same thing. We're just going to flip that over. Sorry, my hand is stuck behind the tripod. And shuffle. Yeah. All right. Okay, so there's that. And that's going to bring the wind down one. Sucks we didn't get to use it. I was just too far. And now we're on round eight. All right, just a little bit of quick cleanup that I forgot to do uh, last round. We'll just discard those. And because it was the end of the round, we're going to discard this. Thankfully, we don't lose it. That's good news. Um, and then uh, as I was thinking back, the, um, what was it, the second living spirit didn't actually do any damage to me, so there's nothing for me to block. So I need to put this back and take away my experience uh, that I had given myself for that. So I think, if I remember clearly, I, I think we're back to normal. All right, so Norman, he's standing in front of two living spirits. What's he going to do? Um, hmm, well, ooh, we'd be losing a card. Mm, let me show you my thoughts. Um, we might, ooh, we'd have to lose a card. But we might be able to pierce and kill these living spirits right off the bat. If I were to move and jump, so like if I were to trample over <laughs> these guys, um, I could come over here. Heck, that might be enough to just do it. My thought was, get over here and then spear them that way. But I'd be losing that card, but it's, it's the only way that I can see that I can move and jump right now. i got to get over those guys. So, yeah, I'd really love to use that spear if I can, especially because I have the wind element on me right now, uh, and that'll pierce one, which will remove one of their shields. So I'm kind of thinking about maybe doing this. It's only an attack of two, so I'm not necessarily going to be... The situation isn't ideal, and I'm not going very fast. So... Another option is maybe I could step back and hope that they start coming in the doorway, maybe? Um, is another idea, because they might be going fast. 
So why don't I, let me just plan, well I don't know, <laughs> let me plan on, on these two cards um, with the option of hopefully the spirits go faster and I can just step back and let them funnel in through the doors maybe. So yeah, let's just put those there and we're going to call it, how much slower do I want to go? I don't want to go too slowly because I don't want them to hurt me. I am down to four health. Um, let's stick with 35 and we'll let fate decide what we're doing. And Crystal, she's down to one card. Um, and thankfully Norman's going to hold people off, I think, while she does a full rest. Okay, so basically this is Norman against six people. <laughs> so <laughs> only good things are going to happen, I'm sure. All right, so the spirits. This is the one I'm kind of extra concerned about. 55, okay, Norman's going first. They're going to move and then curse. Holy, I, I want to kill them before they can do that. That would be awesome if I could. Okay, and then the cultists, they're going to initiative of 10. They're just going to kind of slink up. I hate that card. And then the living bones are 12. And they're just shielding and moving. Okay, so I think this is going to turn out okay. Uh, we're going to start off with the cultists. They're going to be moving... Uh, one, because two minus one is one. Um, I know, my math skills are amazing. And we start off with the elite one. He's going to target Norman, so he's moving towards Norman. And then he can't attack. And if they die, they're going to... Woo! Freak out. And then uh, the other cultists actually can't move because the living bones are blocking them. So they're going to hang out there. And that was the end of the cultist turn. Now the bones are <laughs> not going anywhere. They're just shielding themselves and then... Uh, adding an extra shield to themselves and then healing. They haven't taken any damage yet, so that's pretty good news. And now, with that all done, that's going to bring us to Norman's turn. So I am hesitant to pull this off, but I don't see I don't see a lot of other great options. So let's trample through these spirits. I highly doubt we're going to even do any damage to them. Uh, but we get a move four with jump. We're in attacking with two, and we're targeting all of the enemies that we move through, and then we're going to lose this card. Let me give myself two experience now, uh, before I forget. So we'll give ourselves experience. We're going to be losing this card. We'll put that there so I don't forget. <laughs> and then let me show you where we're moving and who we're attacking in which order or whatever. All right, so I'm thinking that Norman is going to go one, two, three, because he has jump, so we can, you know, pass through these guys. So we're going to go one, two, three, and stop right here. And that's going to allow us to attack these guys with two. Now they have a shield of two, so that is really going to come down to our modifier. Hopefully our modifier will uh, do some damage. So let's just go right to left on this. We'll start with spirit six, and then we're going to go spirit two. I'll go draw both modifiers now. Okay, so spirit six is going to take two damage, minus two for the shields, plus zero. So nothing on spirit six. And then the other uh, spirit, spirit two, so two damage. They block two. Minus one, so yeah, nothing happens with that trample, and that's fine. Um, but that's just going to put me into position. Oh, I probably should move my figure. Uh, that's going to put me in position to go ahead and do the pierce, and I'm going to use up the wind element to do that. That's going to give us an attack of four, and a pierce of one, and an experience point. So we're going to ignore one of their shields, which is, you know, kind of exactly what I was going for. Okay, so let's use up that wind that's available. And through my trampling, I whoop, came over here so that I could spear these guys. So we're doing an attack of four. They're only going to be blocking with one because we have pierce one, which subtracts one off of um, shields. And so let's start with spirit two and then go to spirit six. So spirit two, an attack of four. Ooh, here we go. All right, an attack of three. But he's only blocking one because of our pierce, and so that takes this guy out. Oh, and I forgot to grab my coinage. Probably should do that. Uh, so coinage on two is going to drop. Coinage here. And then the cultists are going to drop some loot. And then summoned figures don't drop loot, so I'm not going to put any loot over there. So this guy comes off the board. I'm happy about that. We drop that loot. Good deal there. Don't like that guy. So our modifier for the other one is, ooh, yay, plus one. So we've definitely got him. So he'll come off the board, and we'll drop the loot. That's gone. Wow, yeah. I mean, I think these guys could be scarier, but I really lucked out with uh, the way that Norman pulled that off, and I'm going to be able to ignore 
uh, this stuff here. And just because I know that they're coming up this way, let's go ahead and move stuff here for now. I could do this off camera, but I really wanted to do like a behind the scenes thing. Okay, there you go. And Crystal is just going to kind of wake up from her nice little nap. <laughs> uh, let's see, we need to pick one of these cards to lose. Um, and it doesn't matter because we're, we're probably going to pick things up soon. So let's lose this move eight, probably. Well, I might want to move very soon. Mm. That's okay. Let's lose that because having these attacks would be a good thing to have too. Well, no. I'm going to want to move to get her back into the action because she's kind of hanging back so far right now. I think let's get rid of this this card here uh, and then we'll plan on picking it back up so we got that oh well, remember to heal uh, her health is six so she can't go higher than six so we'll just heal her the one and now she's rested ready to go for uh, her next turn so the only thing that needs shuffling is this living bones card so let's just plop that in the middle okay. shuffle shuffle something like that which will bring us up to round nine. So for round nine, Crystal's not like intentionally hanging back super long, uh, but we, hmm, I'm, I'm getting ready to use this card. So probably what I wanna do is to do some major stuff right now so that I can lose them and get things back. So what would that mean? Gosh, I would have loved to have used this card I should have used that earlier so that I could reuse it again. Um, but for now, she's back so far. Okay, can I get within range to do this really cool attack and lose it? Is the question I've got. Mm, let's go look. With so many enemies on the board, this would be great. And it would be great to lose it now before we decide to recover everything. So a range of three. These guys are all up here. They might come up though. One, two, three. So if she can get... To the doorway, one, two, three. I'm guessing these guys are just gonna flood towards Norman, and this could work out for us. So the thing is that we've gotta be able to move three. Well, we could move four, even better. Uh, yeah, I'm just, more, I'm venturing onto dangerous territory here. <laughs> or maybe I could just plan on moving eight, um, just to make sure that I'm in, in, in range, and maybe I could put myself somewhere even more important. Um, and then I can plan on losing those cards. <sighs> what happened last time, though, is that I totally exhausted myself, and I never ended up playing this card, and it totally sucked. And right now what I'm saying is that I'm going to be playing these cards and losing them, and then I just have to be prepared to take whatever damage comes my way so that I can lose damage Blech. or absorb it. So maybe what I should be doing instead... Hmm, I'd love to get this card played, but I really have to move myself into position. Oy vey. Okay, uh, yeah, let's, let's play these two cards. <laughs> it's, it's risky, but I will do it. All right, so here's this plan. And the fastest that we can move is, um, 69. So this is kind of... This is kind of my intention. I mean, obviously I could move three and pick up some loot, but I'm not doing anybody any good by doing that. Norman, on the other hand, what can he do? He's got to do one more turn before he rests. So we know we're playing these two cards. Ugh. I'm not really in a position to do anything very helpful. So I could plan on attacking at a range of three. I guess that's, that's not terrible. Okay, so let's make an initiative of 27, and my plan is to attack with a power of 3 to range of 3 and gain an experience, and then I can move uh, the amount of damage that I've done that turn. Yeah. So the good news is that we only have to worry about <laughs> two kinds of bad guys, two of each. And so our Living Bones characters, initiative of 64. So they're going to go um, after Norman, but before Crystal, And then our Cultists... 31, so they're going also. All right, so they're going to go second, oh, but they're healing themselves. I don't like that one bit. Um, well, not, they're not just healing themselves. They're healing at a range of three. Hmm. So with Norman going first, let's, 
Let's try... Oi. Kind of sucks. Uh, I'm, I want to kill a cultist before they can heal, is the thing. Uh, but the only cultist that's within range um, has seven health, so attacking him with three, it really isn't going to do anything, even if I got a times two, which I probably won't. Um, so that's crappy. Um, and then we're going to move however much we attack, or however much damage we end up inflicting this turn. So, yeah, I guess I could just, why don't I do this? Let me just move to, like, normal so that I can attack uh, the cultists that I actually want to attack. So I'm going to use this just for normal movement to move to, um, yeah, let's get into position. I'm thinking about coming over here, one, two, now we can, we can shoot over that. One, two, three. That puts me in position and kind of gets me away from people. This living bones is still going to come towards me. Um, but I'm not terribly scared of him. Uh, yeah, I just want to be able to shoot at this guy because he only has a health of three right now. So it would be awesome if I could just kill him before he heals. So let's go one, two. Yeah, I'm going to put myself... I'm going to put myself right there. I think. Yeah, one, two, three. And then I'm going to shoot at that. Remember, this obstacle doesn't block line of sight. So... There we go. I'm going to go after that cultist. And he is within range, so I'm attacking three, gaining an experience point. Lots of experience points happening this uh, time around. I'm liking that. And um, good that I'm going to be able to block some stuff because they are going to come after me. And now we are going to modify that three. Please be a positive thing. Yeah, plus zero. Okay, that's enough to take that guy out. And so... This guy is gone. We're going to drop some loot. Now he can't heal himself, so I don't really have to worry too much about that. Um, but I did just barely notice as I was moving that guy. I forgot to put a, a one marker here. It's on the app, so it's not really a big deal, but just so that you guys can see at home, uh, that's what we're going to do. All right, that was Norman's turn. Good job, little trooper. And we're going to bring on the cultist. So our elite cultist is the one that's left, and so he's going to move. Um, his normal movement is 2 minus 1, so he's just going to move one spot. He'll come down here, and then he's healing himself or an ally uh, that's within range. Specifically, uh, whoever has taken the most damage so far, and these guys are at full health. So he's just going to heal himself back up to 9, which is, you know, it's too bad, but at least he's not hurting me. And now the Living Bones are going to go, and we're going to start with Living Bones number 1. He is going to have movement minus one, so he's just going to move two. Well, it doesn't matter. He's just going to move down here uh, to attack Norman. His attack is a one plus one, so right now he's at a two, and then modified as a plus zero. All right, two is not too bad. So let's just take that, especially because I don't have any cards to discard or to lose to prevent that. So we're going to go one, two, there. And Norman's kind of wishing that he had his, uh, his piercer again, because these guys are in perfect position. Oh, but you know what? I shielded one of those damage. I gotta, I gotta do that. So he really just took, uh, I'm gonna add a health back. He just took one damage, right? And then that gains him an experience. He's up to 10. That's pretty nice. Our other Living Bones character is just gonna make his way up this way. So I've gotta get Crystal up there to heal Norman. Holy, what is she going to do? I don't know. Uh, he's just getting weak, but has to rest next turn, so I'm kind of kind of worried about the fella. But I do think that our plan is going to work out fairly well and might end up protecting Norman. So, um, yeah, all right. I do think I'm going to do this. I'm not going to just move. I'm not going to just move two like I was potentially planning on. Uh, I can move, I'm going to end up moving three. So I'm going to move three. So I am losing that card and putting her one, two, three, right there in the doorway because now she's in within range of three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three of all of those guys there. So she's going to hit all of them with our next attack. And um, we're going to be targeting three people. So that's great. And at a range of three, which is perfect. An attack of three, and you know what? What better time than to use this? I'm going to go ahead and make this an attack of four, uh, and we're going to be losing this card. Uh, let's uh, activate the fire before I uh, forget. That's up there. 
And I, unless we have a miracle, I don't think I'm going to be killing anybody. These guys are five with a shield. That cultist is nine, so I doubt anybody's going to die. But let's go left to right. Uh, we're going to start here. So bones number one. We're going to attack him with four. Let's see what the modifier is. Modified is zero. Okay. Uh, so that guy is taking four damage, blocking one. So he takes three damage. Not terrible. So let's bring him down to two. Why is that so hard for me? <laughs> Next up is the cultist. It would be awesome to get a times two and bring that guy down to one health. Uh, it's not happening, but I wish it would. Plus one. Okay, five damage isn't terrible. So that's going to bring this guy down to uh, four. Right on. Right on, right on. And then the final Living Bones character. So four attack plus zero, and he's blocking one. Also takes three, so he's down to two. So not bad. The only problem, though, is that Norman, who is very close to these guys, uh, is going to be resting this next round. We. So here we go, next round, and also, oh, Crystal isn't even doing anything attack-like this time. Erg. This could really be bad. Honestly, I am a little bit nervous. Uh, he's taking a long rest. Oh, man. Unless, mm, before the end of the round, maybe he needs to do a short rest. Yeah, do you know what? He needs to do a short rest because he has to have cards in order to discard. So I haven't done very many short rests, and, you know, technically this isn't the end of the round yet, but um, don't yell at me. Okay, so uh, for our short rest, what we're going to be doing is uh, here, optional short rest. We can lose one random uh, discard and then recover the rest. Yeah, he needs to do that because he's got to be ready and in the game. So I'm going to just shuffle these up. We're going to lose one at random, which sucks, but it's less risky than Crystal um, taking a short rest and losing that card that's going to get her all of her lost cards back. So there we go. Okay, we're all shuffled. I'm going to lose this one. Oh, the skewer. I love the skewer. Okay, but at least he's got his stuff back. All right, and so I guess while we're here, uh, let's plan this out. So he has one guy next to him. And another guy coming around. So maybe, maybe this is going to be the one. Depending on the cultist's movement, he could get into place. Um, and then the other one. Mm, oof, healing. He needs to heal. It's not looking good for him. Okay, so we're going to heal and then attack. And our initiative, yep, let's stick with 18. So I hope that that's enough. Um... It would be cool to do this, but I've got to heal. Yeah, I'm too nervous. We're at we're at three health right now. Okay, so we had kind of already planned out Crystal's turn as I was talking my way through last turn. So our plan here is we're gonna go pretty quickly. Twenty is not too bad. Uh, we're gonna block damage coming after her, and then we're gonna recover all of her lost cards from her hand, or from the lost pile. You know what I mean. So I really need these guys to activate slowly. I need I need them to go more slowly than 20. So numbers higher than 20. Living Bones. Crap. 12. But they're just shielding and healing. They're not attacking. Okay, that's good for Norman there. And then... Uh, and they, oh, but they're healing. Dang it. Okay. And then... Dang it. The Cultist. If we can't kill him, he's going to... He's going to summon the more Living Bones, but... I don't think I can kill him. Four health? Ooh, can I kill him? He's not moving. Dang it. So either way, the living bones are going next. They're shielding themselves and healing themselves too. I freaking hate that. Okay. Yeah, that sucks. But at least they're not attacking. I guess I won't complain too loudly. Norman's turn next. Is he gonna... Uh, he's gotta kill that cultist. I don't want any more bones showing up. Mm. Okay, we might have to do a change of plans. Let's look. So my original plan was to heal myself too. And that would activate the leaf, which mm, don't necessarily need that. Uh, but I could attack with three. Mm. Yeah, I might need to move two. I might need to move two. Uh, let's look. 
If I move two, I could attack these guys. And chances are I'm not gonna I'm gonna kill maybe kill one of them. It depends on what I draw. Um Yeah, but I feel like I kinda have to. I'm gonna have to hold off on healing myself for right now. Ugh, that sucks. Okay, so we just use that to move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we use that to move, and then we're going to attack with a power of three. We're going to gain an experience for this. Eleven. Let's start off with the living bones. We're not going to kill him, but I don't want to waste a good modifier on him. Uh, living bones. He's going to get an attack of three. Oh, wow, we did kill him. Oh, I knew I should have called on the cultist first, though. That would have totally wiped out the cultist. <sighs> okay. Uh... I won't complain. All right, so that was six damage to the living bones. And he is shielding himself with two, but um, did I heal these guys? Yeah, I did heal these guys. So living bones number one, shielding himself with two, but I hit him with six. So that does take this one out. Uh, he does not drop a loot because he was summoned. So he's off the board. All right, good deal. Now the cultist, if I can get a plus one or a plus two, he's dead and won't bring on any more bones characters which would be really nice uh okay here we go plus one you yeah! okay oh my gosh how did i pull that off i have no idea but that was really cool okay yeah i have like the biggest dorkiest smile right now okay this guy is dead i cannot believe that good job good boy norman good boy okay he's gone one living bones character left but that cultist isn't doing anything. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was good. Uh, yeah, let's clean up Norman's play area really fast. I'm impressed with that. I'm excited about that. I'm nervous about the amount of lost cards that we have coming into our last round, but uh, I'm hopeful. Okay, so for Crystal's turn, we're going to start off here. I'm going to go ahead and put a token, and she's going to totally ignore her next two damages. Um... And then we are going to go ahead and recover all of our lost cards. So this is activated, and then this gets lost and is not going to come back. So I'm going to put it face down like that. And we've got our whole hand of cards. Not a lot of turns left, though. I've got to be really careful about how I spend those. Uh, yeah, it's tough when she only has eight. How is that? Is there six cards in there? Yeah, there is. Okay. Well, fingers crossed. And the cultists are not activating. Let's just take this off of the board. Oh, but we would shuffle this, so let's do that. End of round, we're gonna do ooh, a bunch of shuffling. We gotta shuffle this, we gotta shuffle the living bones, and then we've gotta shuffle Norman's modifier. Okay, so that's shuffled, and then I'm taking it off the board. And then, uh, living bones, only one guy left. Gosh, I just, what is in that next room, and am I gonna have enough energy to fight them? That's the real question I've got. So, we've got these. I wonder if I still have my loot. I can't remember if I have my loot, so I could go pick up a bunch of those coins. Okay, so there's that. And then, because Norman had that uh, times two, then we need to shuffle all of these. Oh, not trying to cheat. Just can't pick things up, apparently. <laughs> all right, there's that. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with me? Oh, it's getting late. Okay. Um, cut it for luck. Okay. So this element comes down, and we are at round nine. So I'm kind of having this issue of being tempted by that loot, but knowing the time is running out, and we have got to get this stuff taken care of quickly. Uh, I do still have my loot card. Can I move three? I can move three pretty safely. Um, yeah, I mean, this is kind of silly, but at least it helps me pick up money, which will let me buy nice and shiny things <laughs> for better or worse. Let's pretend, you know what, we want to donate this to a good charity is his purpose um, in doing this stuff. So let's Let's go with an initiative of 87. We're planning on looting and moving. Um, yeah, we still have that living bones hanging out there, but I'm going to see if Crystal can take care of him, maybe? At the very least, she could put herself into a position to uh, protect. So let's think. Um, 
what's a really good attack that's not going to lose anything? Uh, we could attack three to range of two. Well, we don't have a fire element right now. Otherwise, we could have added wound. Well, he has four and a shield. Not great. Um, ooh, or she could heal Norman. Maybe we heal Norman and just let the skeleton do whatever the heck it's going to do this turn. So, yeah, I'd really like to heal him up. So what's my fastest thing? Oh, and another heal. Well, Norman is down significantly. Um, she'd be able to do that pretty fast, and then the guy's not really scaring her. Okay, so, yeah, well, oh, but he's not a range of one. Hmm. Well, what do I want to do? Maybe I want to summon an ally? <laughs> no, I really do want to heal him. Okay, I want to heal him, uh, but I can't heal him from one away. I'd have to move into place, which means I'm not using that anymore. So maybe instead what I do is I put myself into a pretty good position. Moving three. Mm, let's look at the board really fast. So could I do some kind of an attack? I, I could attack at a range of two, but it's a very weak one against that skeleton. Uh, but might be worth it, maybe? Um, or an attack of three, an attack of three to range of two isn't bad. Oh, but then I can't heal. I need to look at the bottom actions. So, one, two, oh, he's out of range anyway for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, give me a second. This is boring. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. I think, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm planning on moving three, because I want to put myself right here. Because that's going to put me in a position where if the Living Bones is going to target someone, they're going to target me. I can ignore that, and I can heal Norman, and we can kind of get back up to normal. So, yeah, let me go ahead and swap out that bottom action that I was planning. So, yeah, let's swap this out. Oh, no, but I wanted to go fast. Dang it. Okay, here's what I'm doing instead. I'm going to stick with that, um, but I'm probably going to use this as a regular movement instead of the other. I want to heal... I want to heal Norman, and we're going to go with Initiative 7. It's just the right thing to do. So we just have to hope that he doesn't have an initiative better than 7. Living Bones is... <laughs> 12. And he's not attacking, but he is healing again. Gosh, I hate that stupid healing thing. I don't know why... I, I swear that's like the third or fourth time I've drawn that. Jeez Louise. So I guess that's good because there's no chance that I could hit him in a way that's going to kill him and he would just heal up anyway. So we're just going to move our normal two and then we're going to heal Norman because uh, he'll be within a range of three. And I think instead of moving two, why don't I just put myself into position right here to get this loot. That token's falling off. You can't even see it, I don't think, from this angle. Well, maybe yeah, a little bit. Okay, so we're going there, picking up this loot, and we're going to heal Norman three. Let's just pick that up first. We heal Norman 3, to which he tips his new helmet um, graciously at Crystal. And now for uh, our living bones, he's just going to extra shield, which is fine because I'm not really planning on attacking him. And he's going to heal himself back up to 5. All right. And after thanking Crystal for all of her help, uh, <laughs> he is just going to run over and position himself. It doesn't matter if I'm moving 2 or 3. I don't really plan on pushing the living bones... I don't, yeah, I don't really want, yeah, no big deal. I'm just going to run two, doesn't matter. And then we're going to loot um, all of the stuff within one. That's going to pick us up three loots. So as Norman does this, Crystal just kind of rolls her eyes like, okay, just don't worry about it and go pick up your money. That's wonderful. Okay. And I've really got to stop wasting my time. we got to get into that third room before I run out of cards. So as the round comes to an end, the only thing we need to do is reshuffle this same card that we're going to get again. <laughs> Maybe there's multiples of them. I have no idea. I haven't looked through the deck um, of any of these guys because I kind of wanted to be surprised. So here we go. Maybe it's because I haven't been cutting for luck. That could be what it is. Okay, cut for luck like that. Round 10. And let's start off with Norman's turn because his options are extremely limited. <laughs> we basically just have these two. Uh, thankfully, one of those is an attack of three with the range of three. That would be perfect against uh, the skeleton. And then he can move three, or depending on how much damage he does. So, initiative 27. Let's plan on doing something like that. Crystal's turn. Not so straightforward because we've got uh, four cards. 
So maybe she is going to run in... Um, I'm thinking Norman's going to take care of, hopefully, the living bones, but probably not, and then run towards the door. Maybe what she's going to need to do is finish off the living bones. Um, so let's plan on using... Oh, an attack of two to range of two. Well, that would be a separate attack. We could do this card. Yeah. Uh, as the top attack action. We'll put that there. And then, what else could she do? Um, she could run. Depending on how this attack against the living bones goes, she might want to run and position herself closer to the door. Because, like I said, we've got we've to get this thing clipping along. Well, but I don't want to exhaust that yet. So... Maybe we'll just use a movement of four. That should get us close enough. All right, so initiative 36, movement of four. Yeah, there's our plan. And of course, that could all be foiled depending on what this fool does. So he has an initiative of 74. All right, um, we're going to go before he does. Let's hope that we can kill him. So Norman's going to go ahead and attack him with uh, an attack of three he is at range which is perfect let's give ourselves experience before i forget and i must be doing this smarter i feel like i hardly got any experience in my other gameplays yay me for experience um yeah so we're gonna go ahead and do that and then uh we might as well end up using our boots either way so we're attacking that skeleton he is within range we're gonna be three modified come on we need lots of good things or that. All right, so three damage, but he blocks one. So he's just going to take two. Uh, that's not fantastic, but depending on what crystal, mm, who knows? Who knows? So we can go ahead and discard that, and then we're going to be able to move. Uh, let's see. The amount of damage that we have inflicted this turn. So we inflicted two damage. If I, Well, he blocked one. Mm, I think we did three damage, and then he blocked one. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I could be. Uh, but either way, just to get ourselves into position and get this thing moving along, because uh, I know I have to rest next turn. Oh, this could be really dumb. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I kind of want to run in there and join the fight. Mm. Let's use our boots. Might as well, because we're going to get them back soon. Yeah, we're going to bust in there. He is weak, uh, but we we have six health we can take. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Either way, I think I've got five movement. So that's going to go one, two, and now it's time to go read the app. What in the world does the app have to say? All right, let's go ahead and see what happens when we open that door. When you open the stone door, you see an altar in the middle of the room pulsing with a strange red energy. One of the cultists turns to you and lowers her cape, revealing a smile. It's the woman from the brown door. <sighs> what a butthead. We totally were trying to help her out. Just in time for the sacrifice, she says as she turns to the altar. We need strong blood to complete our ritual. The cultists begin chanting as you heft your weapon and charge. Special rules. All characters and characters, characters summons suffer one damage at the start of their turns. If they are within two hexes of the altar, and we'll have a token, I guess. Um, all monsters heal one damage at the start of each turn if they are within two hexes of the altar. Uh, do not set up the flame demons until all cultists are dead. At that time, read two. Well, that sucks. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see what's in that room. Okay, it looks like... Ugh. Okay, um, here, let's turn that upside down really fast. It looks like we've got... Um, two elite cultists and then these fire demons are going to show up when we kill the cultists and an altar okay all right so i've gone ahead and set all of that up and we have um the new layout obviously a new room available here's the altar i gotta not end my turn within two spaces of that and i've got to keep them from getting two spaces with that if i've hurt them because then they're just going to self-heal which is disgusting. Um, yeah, but we've opened up a new room, and so the cultists are going to have initiative 27, which is going to put them next. But Norman's going to finish his turn. He had two more movements because he used his boots. Uh, let's go one, two. 
We're just going to kind of keep away from the altar and go around the room. Ring around the rosy. And then because I need to remember to read uh, story plot 2 or whatever, when these guys are dead, I'm just going to go ahead and put a 2 uh, there in the middle, and hopefully I see it and remember it. <laughs> so, yep, there you go. Okay. Um, cultists, their turn. Scary. They are moving plus 0 and attacking plus 0. Uh, so it looks like they're targeting Norman. Uh, their movement is 2, so we're going to go 1, 2, and 1, 2. Like that. Oh, not pretty. There we go. Like that. And so for Christelle's turn, she's going to be able to move four. Um, let's get her... Mm, okay, let's, yeah, let's go move four. So she's going to go one, two, three, four. I'd like to get close to the action, but I still need to be close enough to uh, shoot at Living Bone. So she's going to run over here, turn around, aim at that guy. I don't have fire to exhaust, which is, you know, too bad, but here we go. And then uh, we're going to attack with three. We are at a range of two. So plus zero. And he's going to block one. So this might have to be one of those things where we keep chipping away and he just kind of follows us. <laughs> uh, we've got bigger, bigger fish to fry, but also he heals himself. So I've got to avoid that if I possibly can. And then it is his turn. Um, and so he's going to move. Uh, he'll just move right into place right here and he's going to target one enemy with all of his attacks uh, he has two attacks oh crap on me and so yeah first attack is going to be one modified as a one okay so that's just going to stay to one I'll go deal with that in a second and his second attack a one modified and he misses great uh, and then we're going to reshuffle that here soon so it kind of sucks that I'm going to lose one of these um, due to uh, that, but, you know, what are you going to do? So I'm going to put this down. Oh, what am I doing? Uh, <laughs> oh, I do gain an experience. That's what I was doing. Gain an experience, but also take a damage. And do you know what? I feel like I never moved that when I put that into place, but I feel like that was a few rounds ago. It probably doesn't even matter at this point. So I'll just ignore it and try to remember to annotate that in the video. All right, so the only thing that we are shuffling is this deck here. We'll go ahead and flip that over. Apparently, I did cut for luck last time. Well, no, that was a different deck, huh? Never mind. Okay. Hopefully, Crystal can take on some bigger hits <laughs> this next round, uh, or at least one bigger hit this next round. That would be pretty nice. Okay, here we go. Round 11. So maybe I'm crazy, but I feel like this is getting freakishly close. Like, I feel like I'm running out of actions pretty soon, and we're going to both exhaust, but I don't want to lose a second scenario. Um, I think my current plan, so we're talking strategy, Norman's going to rest, but I want to get away from this altar. This altar seems to have some bad um, mumbo-jumbo. Mama Jamba? What do people say? <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm going to lure these guys out, and we're going to we're gonna have our big fights down here, I think. Yeah. Either way, Norman's resting. So we'll just uh, put that there. For Crystal, as much as she'd like to kill that Living Bones character, well, we don't really want to kill anybody. So maybe we'll look for an opportunity to try to shoot at uh, the cultists as they're making their way over. Um... Let's see. Well, she might be able... Hmm, maybe she'll be able to position herself into a place where she could aim at all three, but uh, I, I don't know that I'm ready to lose things yet, but there's really no sense in looting right now. Except we could put ourselves into a position to be a little safer. Ooh. Okay, well, either way, we have to play these two cards. And, um, you know, I think... I'd like to go slower rather than faster because I'm not exactly sure where people are going to end up, but we might move eight and attack three, but that's going to lose two cards. And here I am talking about uh, my nerves of running out of cards. So maybe, who knows, we're going to see. But either way, let's go, let's go slower because we could take the living bones hit, whatever he's about to, to hit or to deliver to us. 
And forgive me, I just didn't love the way that things were fitting on camera, so I have shifted the cultists to this side and brought the attack modifiers up here. All right, here we go. Uh, what is our initiative? Oh, that stupid bones. He's going to heal himself. I hate this card. Okay, um, yeah, let's just hope the cultists don't raise any bones. All right, good. They're just going to slowly move and heal, but they're already at full health, so that's fine. Okay, so living bones. All he's doing is putting up a shield and healing himself. Gosh, I hate that. Um, two. All right, that card. Uh, cultists, they're going to move minus one. I wish they'd move faster. Um, they're going to move minus one, and then they're going to heal, but they don't need to heal. So they're coming down and around, and again, they would be healing themselves because they're around the altar, which is why i got to pull them back. All right, that brings us to Crystal's turn. Um, uh, okay, um, let's just count this out really fast. If I were to go one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Everybody would be in line of sight. Maybe this is the time to pull off that attack, but they're just gonna heal them. Mm, they're just gonna heal themselves. So maybe not. Okay, I've gotta I don't want to attack these guys until they're out and away from that altar. So let's just try to draw them out. I really hope that we're gonna have enough cards to do that. And so I think the way that I'm gonna play this out is let's do a basic attack, just a normal attack of two. Uh, first against the living bones while we're standing next to him. So just a melee attack of two. Oh, I was not expecting that. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> we didn't kill him, but we get really close. So he blocks, um, oh, well, he blocks two of those damage because we have this shield here. So he, uh, goes down to two again. <laughs> Gosh, I hate that. <laughs> okay. Um, and then with the other card, I'm just going to go ahead and we could move two or three. Uh, let me put myself one, let me put myself out here in this corner and that's going to give me the opportunity to shoot, uh, from a distance, I think. And I could sing Bette Midler if you wanted me to, but I have a feeling you'd unsubscribe. So let's not do that and we'll just, um, end of the round. Yeah, that is the end of the round. Okay. So while we're here, we need to go ahead and shuffle these in. Thanks for that times two. I wish it was a little more exciting. It would have been amazing. <sighs> you know what sucks? Had I done that cool time, like attacking all three people, that would have been cool. But oh well, we could still be good and cool people. Um, shuffle, shuffle. Ah. Oh, there's my miss. Okay. <laughs> Put it back in the middle. <laughs> and one more time. And cut for luck. All right. There we go. Okay. And then with this dadgum stupid card, shuffling again, we're just going to draw it again like we always do. Oh, and I guess I could do Norman's Rest action, but you know, what's the fun in that? So for Norman's Rest action, let's turn that, heal to, okay. So you can take some hits again, and then what are we going to get rid of? Um... Maybe, well, that's great. That's an attack of three to range of three. And since we're drawing these guys out, probably want to keep that. I might be to the point where we can get rid of this loot card. I mean, it is a good move four, but we're just going to be backing out of that room and pulling those guys out. Yeah, let's do that. I want to hold on to heal one more time, but that'll probably be the next card that we get rid of. Okay, so there's that. Uh, he's rested. Anything else I need? No, I'll turn that up. Okay, yep, we're good. Up to round 12. We're getting pretty tired here. Okay, so Crystal, this is easy. She's just going to uh, heal herself or long rest herself. Norman, on the other hand, holy. okay, we have got to do as much damage as we can. I know that we have, like in the picture, there were these Phoenix things, and, and, and once we kill the, the cultists, this this uh, fire demon is going to come out. Um, so I'm trying to save some of my big attacks for that. So maybe... Okay, I'm at a health of 8. Maybe what I do is I heal myself while these guys are still coming over. And I do a, a basic attack of 3. Um, 
Yeah, it'd be great if they were closer. Ooh, or if I can move enough to go kill those living bones and still draw those guys out. Those bones are just going to continue to heal themselves. Um, one, two. I'm just looking at the board. It's going to be three spaces to move to the living bones. So can I move three? I can move three. And then if I could just attack him, he has two. <sighs> Don't have any pierce. All right. I think what I'll do is this. Let's plan. We're kind of going slowly here. Let's plan on moving three and attacking that number that we moved. And we could even move five. But again, I kind of want to save. Hmm. Do I want to save? I just don't want to attack. Ugh, this is killing me. You are killing me, Lisa. Um, I don't know. Let's plan on doing that. Gosh, we're running so low on cards. I have four that are lost. This sucks. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Another option is we could run up to a cultist and um, use our boots to move five and to take a swing. That's not a bad idea. <sighs> I'm getting nervous. Okay, let's see what these guys are doing before we do anything dramatic. Okay, so Living Bones is probably gonna go first. 45, well, yeah, they're gonna go early. And I don't think, well, yeah, they could reach, they're gonna reach Crystal. Okay, the cultists. <sighs> they're moving so slowly, move faster. Okay, uh, all right, so cultists are going first. They're moving one space. So one, one. Get away from that stupid altar. I hate it. Okay, I'm over here in the corner. All right, next up is the living bones. He's going to move zero and attack, or move plus zero. So he's moving three, and he's going to just come over here, it looks like, and target... Um, Crystal, which is fine. His attack is one uh, plus zero, so just one, and then modified as a one. All right, so he's attacking Crystal for two, and she is just completely absorbing uh, that damage. So we'll just go ahead and get rid of this, and then that's going to earn her um, an experience point. Okay, so my problem is if I move five towards... If I move five towards the cultists, then I'm in that ring of danger that I don't want to be in, uh, where I'm going to lose a health. But I do have a lot of strength, uh, but the cultists at the end of their turn are going to heal one who, unless I draw them away. But the only way I'm going to draw them away is by leaving the room. <sighs> the room. Um, but I definitely need to kill them before they start summoning some guys. Uh, these decisions are killing me. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. I think uh, it sucks. It's going to be risky, but I think we've got to do it. Let's use our boots. I don't want to have this fight by the altar. Uh, I want to kill the... All right. We can get these things back after we rest. So we're going to be able to do this again. So I'm going to use my boots. Let's just go make sure that the living bones are dead. I think. Let's plan on moving 3 plus 2, which is 5. Um, and then I'm not pushing. I'm just going to go run over there. Mm, I, don't, I don't think that that's mandatory. You know, as, as soon as I said that, I feel like that's probably not true. I think that that probably is mandatory, but what I'm thinking about is going to be okay still. So I can't really push the guy. All right, here's what I'm doing. Let's just go see if we can do some damage over here. One, two, three, four, five. We're coming over here, and I'd have to push, but that guy can't get pushed anywhere. So he's just going to stay there, and then we're going to attack him with five. Modified would be... Fine, that's four. Okay, we finally got him with one to spare. And so he's out. He doesn't drop a loot because he was a summoned character. Um, that's gone. And... Crystal is grateful um, for Norman's service to our country.
And with that, it brings us to round 13 because there was nothing. Oh my gosh, I forgot to <laughs> rest yourself. I just don't think about resting. Oh my gosh. Sorry, let's just quickly do this uh, heal, her full rest action. And what are we getting rid of? Um, I think now's the time to get rid of the loot. All right, so that was her <laughs> rest action. And um, now let's plan what she's doing. Uh, we've got to draw these guys out. How are we doing this? Okay, um, yeah, let's go. Let's go take a sneak peek at what we're doing. Okay, so I think we're just gonna move here. One, two, three, four. So that's a range of four, um, which means I probably wanna use this. And hopefully Norman can engage an element for us uh, so that we could use it. That would be extremely helpful if we could do that. So I'm just planning on moving two, and then I'm planning on going pretty slowly so that these guys can creep on up. So, maybe, how would I move slowly without losing a card that I want? Let's, let's use this one for its, uh, for its movement. So, put these down here, and we're going to go slowly, hoping that those guys creep their way up um, for funsies. And silly Norman forgot to clean up his room, so let's do that. And can he get within that range three tack of three? Probably. So let's plan on that. Gosh, we are getting down to this. We are running so low on actions. And we've got this other monster coming around. Crap. Okay, well, Norman is definitely going to be exhausted. Um, okay. He could heal. Oh, and do this. Or move. Move move three and jump. Because he might need to get into position. Yeah. Let's plan on that. I'm going to hold on to this for a little bit. And he wants to go pretty slowly. Um, just to get those guys moving in. Oh, let's hope that they're moving quickly. And yes, apparently I'm that person that can't let things go. So I have <laughs> rearranged the side. There's no more living bones. Just trying to keep things clean on the screen. And uh, all right. Cultists. 27. Oh, they're tied. No, they're not. They're going first. Okay. That's great. All right. Their movement, they're going to move two. One, two. One, two. Okay. This is going to work out really well, I think, and hope, because they are, especially because they're outside of this ring of healing. Okay. I think this is where stuff gets good. We'll see. And in fact, that was so good that what I think I'm going to do is change my plan. Let's just move, let's just move normal two, and then that's going to put us into position to get both of those guys with an attack of three, uh, and we're going to gain an experience. So let's do that. Okay. And let's, excuse me, go move into position. Okay. One, two. Oh, this is going to work out nicely. Okay. Let's go, uh, let's go left to right. So guy on the left, he's taking three damage. Oh man, times two or plus zero. That's fine. Three damage, we'll take it. And then the other guy, uh, the one on the right, is taking three damage. Plus zero. All right, so three on both of them. So they're both coming down to six. Okay, and they're outside the ring. That's, that's what we needed. All right, Crystal, let's do something good. So she is just... Um, using this one to move two. I'm planning on summoning the ally to hopefully help us with whatever whatever those cultists are about to raise. <laughs> and then we're gonna do an attack of, oh, dang it. Uh, my plan was to have Norman um, activating the element, but, but we forgot to do that because we switched gears, which is fine. Um, so we'll just do an attack of two. <sighs> That's annoying. All right, an attack of two uh, at a range of three. So let's go move into place and decide who we're attacking. So one, two, we could really just get right in there, I think, like that. And we could attack either, either fella. Uh, let's attack this one right here. Okay, so the one on the left, he's number three. Our attack of two modified is awesome. Okay, three damage. We can do this. 
This is coming down to three. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like sweating a little bit. Oh, gross. And just really quickly to show that I'm not so sloppy, uh, we're gonna go ahead and discard that one. He's gonna have to long rest. So he's basically just gonna stand in the door um, and long rest this turn. I mean, I could short rest. Oh man, is there anything that, I, no, cause I, I need to not just lose this random. I've gotta, I've gotta be really methodical in what I'm picking, I think. So, well, yeah, all right. Oh, I don't know, am I gonna short rest? I could really keep any of these. No, I probably want to get rid of this one. All right, so I'm going to plan on doing a long rest. He's almost exhausted. Round 14, Norman is long resting, and he's also blocking the door. So uh, what can we do? Um, we could, OK. I'm just hesitant. Sorry, I'm trying to keep the glare off. I don't know why these have been so glary today. I feel like all the lights are in the same position. Okay. Um, if I can avoid it, I want to avoid losing a card. Oh, I want to have this top ability on one card and this bottom ability on a different card. <laughs> that's really what I want, but that's not going to happen. So maybe I can... Um, all right, let's put this one up because we're not going to lose it no matter what. And then I want to use this one soonish. Well, either way, I'm going to just use it for a move, but I'm not even moving. So, all right. Okay. Uh, my initiative doesn't matter. I'll go earlier. Sure. And then my plan is to just basic move and then attack. Okay, the cultists are, please don't summon, please don't summon. Okay. Oh, but they're healing. 31. Dang it. Oh, I'm so pissed. Okay. So let me, hopefully I get this right. So they can't move anywhere, but they're not attacking. But they are self-healing. I freaking hate that. I almost had that one dead. Okay. So they're not moving anywhere because they can't go through Norman. And then they're going to heal. So hopefully I'm doing this right. The way this works is that number three... He looks and at all of his allies and himself within range, and he is the one that has lost the most, so he's going to heal himself for six. And then this guy goes, and he looks at himself and everybody within range three, and they're tied, so I think he heals himself. Not that it really matters because everything is very uh, in place right now, but just want to play safely. Okay. That was the cultists. I, I got to kill them. Ugh. Okay, I'm feeling very hesitant to use this card and go after those two cultists, but because I, I can't, we can't lose anymore. We're so close to the end that I don't think I'm willing to just use that card, but it could mean killing that cultist if I get, he has six health, I would get, you know, maybe three here and maybe two there. Oh, this is tight. Um, gosh, we're getting down to it. Um, hold on, I need to do a little bit of math. Okay, I'm back. Where Norman is so close to exhaustion, I can't rush her exhaustion anymore than it already is right now. So I'm going to just not move. She's just going to stay in place. Um, so I'm just going to discard that. And then an attack... I'm going to go for an attack of three uh, ranged. I really wish I could have gotten that wound, but I can't. So we're just going to attack the uh, weaker cultist with three and modified. Come on, times two. Oh my gosh, could you imagine? <sighs> this is so close. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That's fine. Chill out, Tom. And Norman is resting, angry that she missed that. So for this one, we are discarding this. Oh, but I probably want to use this against them right now. Dang it. What am I discarding? Um, maybe I discard this one. 
Yeah, let's discard that one because while the cultists are there, I want to be able to use this next. Okay. And then he is healed back up to full health, which is cool. I don't think I bumped that. I think he was at 13 experience. I don't mean to cheat. Oh, and sorry. I didn't address this earlier. Um, this is down one. Um, I bumped it forever ago uh, when I was shuffling and I dropped the card. I bumped that and I forgot to fix it. Okay, that's down one. Mm. Ugh, nerves. And now we are up to uh, round 15. And I forgot to uh, go ahead and shuffle this deck. Gosh, I'm so nervous right now because... Those guys are going to summon some living bones, and that's going to make this nearly impossible to win, because we have to kill everybody in order to win this scenario. Okay. Um, okay. There's that. She's resting. And after Norman rested, sorry, I should have turned that back up. Okay. Um, well, while he's there, we're going to hit with that one. And after that, I don't know that it matters uh, what we do. Nobody to heal. So it's just kind of a matter of what do I want to hold on to. Uh, let's just plan on using this for its fake movement. Okay. And then um, my initiative. Yeah, let's go earlier rather than later. Cultists, do not raise them bones. Oh, they're going to explode. That's okay, though. Um, oh, my thumb was covering. Okay, they're going first. All right. So we're starting with number three. He can't really move anywhere. So he's attacking one, minus one, so zero. And then plus one. Okay. Uh, so here, I'm just going to show you. Norman's taken a hit. Oh, not that way. <laughs> okay. That's fine. All right. The other cultist. Uh, oh, sorry. That was um, two. I don't know why I looked at the one. It was two plus one, minus one. So just two. Still only one damage, though, because we're using uh, that thing there. And then the other one, uh, hitting for two minus one, which is one, plus zero. All right, one more damage, which is blocked by uh, this, and we gain an experience for that. And why did I put that face down? I have no idea. Okay, that's coming over here. It's lost. Oh, oh okay. Um, yeah, I really am. I really am awkwardly nervous about this <laughs> okay uh not really moving anywhere not i guess i mean might as well heal myself sure why not i'll heal myself and i'll activate the wind element so i'm just going to heal myself up to 10 might as well it's not doing anything else uh we'll get the wind or the leaf why did i say <laughs> leaf on the wind okay and then we're going to be doing this attack so let's go um let's start by moving the leaf up Okay, up there. And once again, let's go left to right and give myself an experience for this. 15 experience, that's great. Okay, here we go. Times two right now would be ideal. <gasps> oh my gosh. I, yeah, I cannot believe that. <sighs> okay, this guy gone. Now, the negative to that is that as he's dying, he's going to do four damage to me. And his modify is zero. Okay, so four damage. That's fine. I could take it. And I just realized how stupid that was. I should have healed myself afterwards. Um, not right now, but oh well. Uh, four damage. That would have only made a difference of one. I'd be up at seven. It's okay. All right. Okay, so for the second guy, oh, and then I got to remove the first guy off the board. So for the second guy, yes, four, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. So my bad, I forgot to load these guys up with little loots to remember. So this guy off the board and drops a loot. Okay, other guy just took four damage, so he's down to five. Holy cow, this is getting... This is getting ridiculously close. Okay, so we've just got to shuffle Norman's deck here. Put that in the middle. Pick these up. Okay, I'm praying. Times two goes back on top. 
Okay, once for luck. <laughs> Doing that again. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I've never had this problem in the other videos. I'm just, I don't know. Who cares? Okay, once for luck. Like that. Okay. Crystal is resting, not losing any health. What are we getting rid of? We're to the point where she's got to just start doing bad A attacks. Um, okay, so as much as I want to keep this one around, oh, it is an attack three. Hmm, an attack of two, possibly three. Oof. I think she's going to get rid of this one. There, we know that there's one guy coming up, right? The Phoenix, unless this last cultist brings some living bones. I hope not. We've just got to take him out. He's got to get gone. Okay, uh, oh. But that could be a three and an experience. Okay, that could be a three. This attacks multiple people. Mm. Um, and we need that for the ally. Okay. We're just going to have one guy on the map, maybe. Oh, I'm nervous about the bones. Okay, I'm going to hold on to that. We're going to get rid of, we're going to get rid of this. Okay, these come back in. It's almost, it's almost done. Uh, and sorry, I know I keep obnoxiously mentioning that it's almost done, but that's just because I'm nervous and excited. <laughs> okay, round 16. Mm, okay. All right, that guy has five. My question is, can we get him without losing a card needlessly? Five. Ooh, we could move. We could move and then attack with five. Okay, we're doing that. It's kind of slow going, but at least we're not losing anything. Okay. Yep, that's the plan. Okay. Oh my gosh. All right, what can she do? She has to... She has to be ready for anything. <laughs> so dramatic. Okay, we need her to go first. Is she going to be able to kill him? Probably not. Um, let's just stick with this basic ranged attack. And then be ready to move in case needed. Cultists, do not raise those bones. All right. Let's stick with probably this. No, what am I doing? 36, probably this, probably this. Uh, with the option to swap if needed. Um, because we could just shoot at that cultist twice and maybe kill him, leaving Norman available to go after whatever's raised. I just cannot remember the initiative of these uh, Living Bones, the Living Bones card, which is one of these two. 50-50 shot. 63. Okay. So, all right. I think we're going to be able to kill him before anything else happens. <sighs> Crystal's going first. Okay, so what I think I'm going to have Crystal do is... Uh, do we move first or do we move later? Hmm. Or do we just attack? No, I can't afford to lose a card by using it. I've got to save it. All right. My heart is <laughs> so embarrassing. My heart is racing. Okay. Um, let's attack with three at a range of two. Because uh, who knows? Maybe we are going to get it. Okay. Attack with three. Range of two. We're attacking that cultist. Plus zero. Okay, that's fine. I'll take it. So he's down to two. Yeah. All right, down to two. And then she has move four. So let's just bring her. We've got to get close. One, two, three, four. Stay on the edge right there for whatever's coming out. Oh, I can't remember. Um, yeah. I think I want to be on that side. My question is, do I want to be on this side or the other side? Um, we do have access to the uh, map and the scenario book, and it looks like I want to be on the other side. Okay, so I'm coming over here, because the guy's going to raise right here. All right. Okay, Norman, finish him off. So he's going to move five. All right, so move five. And then that's going to let him uh, attack with five. And then uh, gain an experience. Okay, so the way he's going to move is he's going to go one, two, three, four, five. 
and end up right here. So he's kind of just running around uh, so that he can just charge in. An attack of five. Don't miss. Uh, six. All right, we've got that guy. He's gone. Thank goodness. He can't summon. That would have been literally the end of it all. Okay, so that's here. But now we need to go to the app and read what happens in um, part two. The last cultist crashes to the floor and you try to catch your breath. Suddenly the altar starts to tremble, smoke and fire rising from its core. Demons made out of flame emerge from it and an inferno engulfs the room. You realize that you have failed to stop the ritual. Special rules. All characters and character summons suffer two damage at the start of their turns. At the start of every round, move the fire elemental token to the strong column. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is this is insane. All right, so this guy is flying. He has retaliate two at a range of two. So if I can stay back, that would be great. But this might be one of those things where we just run in and charge and just kill the crap out of him. Uh, and he has four shield, but only three health. But uh, the trick is going to be breaking through those four shields. So I seriously have to do, like, major damage. All out. Here we go. Can I do this? I don't know. One thing's for sure is I can't seem to clean up my character's play areas this round. So I'm going to do that really fast. So Norman is coming down here. Well, we just got to discard these. And then my question is, can I afford to do a short rest? Um... I could be okay to get rid of this card. I don't want to lose these cards. I need to keep these cards. So it's a 50-50 shot. Um, I have no idea what the Flame Demon is going to do, but probably horrible, terrible things. Um, gosh. It's a 50-50 shot. Is it worth it? <laughs> probably not. Ideally, I'd like to get rid of this card. I don't know. Right, let me think about this for a second. Uh, yeah, I might be doing a short rest, but I'm not sure. And Crystal cleaning up her area as well. Okay, these are discarded. Okay. And so as we come into this round here, this goes down and the fire element will always move up to the top. But our characters are going to take two damage each right now. Okay, so two damage to Crystal. Thankfully, we've been all healed up. <sighs> okay, um, and then while we're here, we know we're playing these two cards. I just don't know 100% how. Um, probably like this, and as quickly as I can, which isn't terribly quickly, but the fire element is good. Um, or no, that just tells you to add the, which is fine. Okay, whatever. <sighs> So I decided that I'm going to be doing a long rest. I'm not going to be doing the short rest for Norman. Um, it could kill us, but that's the name of the game, right? All risk. Here we go. He's going to get one more turn. No, maybe two more turns before he's exhausted if the, if the fire demon doesn't kill him first. Okay. Here we go. Fire demon, what have you got? Please be slow. Or, <laughs> don't be slow. Either way. <laughs> okay, so he has a movement plus one, but he has range, so he's just going to move to put himself within range, and he is within range. And Crystal is the closest. Gosh, I wish I could have put her invisibility on. Uh, okay, but he's going to attack minus one. So two minus one, he's just attacking for one. That's not, that's not as scary as I thought it was going to be. Okay, attacking Crystal. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Okay, how did that happen? I don't know. Okay. Okay, I'm going to say okay one more time, and then we're going to play. Okay. So I think what Crystal has got to do to stay in the game is she's going to put on her invisible cloak. So let me start grabbing a token. She is going to be invisible till the end of her next round. Uh, I hope that that's going to protect her. Next thing that she's going to do is she's going to summon the ally. All right, summon the ally to come on and help. 
So we're going to put this here. And we're going to bring the ally in right here. And then we're going to go ahead and attack three at a range of three. We're just targeting one guy, so we get one experience. Oh, and I think I get two experience for summoning the ally. I think that happens now. I don't think it happens when you lose it. I think it just happens now. Mm, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, that's fine. All right. So aiming at the fire demon three. Now we know that he has four shield. So the question is, can I break through that shield? Oh, and then I'm losing this. Oh, is this the right thing to be doing? This might not be the right thing to be doing, but can I afford to lose that? I'm going to only have one more turn. Hold on. Sorry. I got to think this through for a second. Okay, so here's the deal. I can't play this and lose it because then I'm totally out. I'm exhausted. I can't do anything else. I don't think that's the right thing that I... I don't think that's the right thing to do. So I got to rewind. I'm going to heal and move. Yeah, I've got to heal and move. Okay. Now am I healing myself or Norman? Norman wants to get exhausted. I'm going to heal myself. Okay. One, two. Okay, I'm putting myself back at six. Um, and moving. I got to I gotta take, I'm going to take the summoned character off the board. That's not going to be good. Okay. I'm going to heal and move. And that's going to just discard these so that I've got another turn. Yeah. Ah, oh, crap. All right, Norman is doing a long heal. He's going to discard that. He gets these back. We have got to get this guy right now. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's that. He heals too. But I also got to exhaust Norman for his zealot. That would be awesome. At the very least, he's going to get a check mark. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, so normally this would go down, but it's just going to pop back up. And I think I accidentally bumped this. Uh, I think we're at 18. And technically, before we change rounds, Crystal needs to. I'm going to have her do a short rest. And the one card that I want to use is this one because I need to add a wound. Oh, no. I'm going to, no, I can't, I can't risk it. I need to do a long rest. She's going to do a long rest. It's going to get us one more round, and she's invisible for this rest, so she, she won't die, uh, but we do need to take her down, too, because it's the beginning of this round. Okay. Norman also needs to take two damage. Okay. Okay, here we go. Norman, what are you doing, man? All right, my thought is, okay, hold on, I got to do some math. Is this going to be definitely the last round? I might be able to squeeze one more if I don't lose anything, I think. Hold on, hold on, okay, hold on, thinking, mathing. Okay, here we go. So the thing is that if I choose, if I don't lose a card from, like if I don't do this one, I'm gonna have one more round if I'm doing my math right. So I'm gonna play these two down with the intention to move five and attack. And then I'm holding on to this. Okay, that's the plan. But of course, this guy's probably gonna go first. Oh my heck. Okay, so he's attacking. Um, attacking. He's going to spend this to add one to his attack and to add wound. Crap. All right, so he is... He Oh, she's invisible. <gasps> he can't reach Norman. <gasps> oh my gosh. That was awesome. Okay. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay. <sighs> This is like, this is a suicide mission at this point. Okay, Norman's turn. He is doing his, his huge. He's moving five. Um, yeah, let's, let's go trace out where he's going. And then he's going to be attacking five. 
Okay, Norman is going to go one, two, three, four, five. Put himself right here. Oh, but if he pushes, then he can't attack. I was thinking about moving there and then pushing, but then I can't attack. Gosh, this is so close. Okay, the question is, can I survive? If I put myself there, can I survive that? And I don't know the answer to that. I might not be able to. Um, but I don't want to be in a line of attack like that. So I'm going to put myself right here. We're attacking him with five. If I can get a plus two modifier or times two, I win. Here we go. I am sweating like a freaking dog. This is it. This card. I mean, I do have two more turns, but uh, I think he's going to take us out because we're taking all these damage as we go. Okay, currently at five. If I can get seven, I can break through the two shields and do the three damage. <laughs> I'm just so nervous. Hold on. <laughs> okay. No way. Oh my gosh. No way. How is that even possible? I can't believe it. Uh, hold on. One, two, three, four. Wait, I was here. Where was I? I don't even know. Oh, yeah. I was on this loot. I should have picked up this loot. I'm adding this loot. Okay, I was here. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. So we break through these and we take him out. Oh my God. <laughs> That's freaking insane. Oh my gosh. Okay. We did it. I don't know how we did it, but we did it. We got him. <sighs> Hallelujah. All right. I I am freaking out right now. Okay, conclusion. The fire stops, and the only thing that remains on the altar is a small, glowing amber core. You pick it up, and it feels surprisingly cold in your hand, and you are able to sell the gem for a nice profit, and you resolve to never help <laughs> crying women. <laughs> crying. <laughs> that is, that's very funny. Never help crying women in the taverns again. Okay, that's hilarious. Um, our reward is we're going to collect 40 gold uh, collectively. Okay. All right. Okay, so that was that. Was that. Um, that was crazy and awesome and incredible. So if you're interested in seeing how uh, this all wraps up, that would be super fun. I'd love to have you around. Um go ahead and watch my next video where I'm going to just go ahead and clean up the uh, play areas and make some decisions and gather experience and all that stuff. Um, tentatively, my plan right now is to uh, head back to the uh, Black Borrow, no, to, to, to Borrow Lair. Um, I want to go back and see if we can fight that guy, I think. Hopefully win this next time. Thank you guys so much for watching and for witnessing that. Honestly, no one would have believed me if I told it, which is half of why I'm recording this whole series so that, well, usually so that people can watch my horrific draws. But that moment was insane and why I love this game so much. Okay, cool. I need to go. I need to go take a shower. I am disgusting. Okay, bye!